scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. The laws of the kingdom are a revelation of the love of God to mankind so that your success in life or your failure becomes absolutely dependent on you and not on God. And if you take responsibility for your life, listen to me please, if you take responsibility, I assure you, no power in existence. You know, some of them said, if you know where I come from, and all of that. The only way to prevail over the wickedness that exists in this realm is to pay attention to the laws of the kingdom. They were designed to cripple Satan. There are two ways to bind the devil. One is by prayer. Another is by knowledge. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Tonight, I'll be sharing on something very powerful, building on what I taught last week. If you've not listened to last week's message, please listen again and again. I think I've listened to it about two times or so extraordinary success this is very important this is not listen let me clarify something hold on this is not this success success thing you know there's, there's a way people behave about success you know that this is foolishness this is madness going nowhere right oh i'll be successful in this and that and that things will change and people jump and gyrate and at the end of the service you ask the person how was the service you say, what I, I cannot even explain you Ask the person now, so what did you learn and what new decision are you going to make as a result of what you've learned? Say, I don't know, but I just feel it in my body. Something has happened. You will never be successful that way. Christianity is not being fetished. Are you getting my point? God makes you anointed and he, he builds you with content. There are many people with whose experiences. Oh, we fell down, we got up, wonderful. But if there is no content inside of you, you are going nowhere absolutely so it's not enough to fall down and say i was shaking i couldn't describe why my right hand was just moving alone wonderful unfortunately it doesn't give you a job unfortunately it doesn't make you great that is a spiritual experience communicating something we're not neglecting the operations of the spirit but you must have content tell your neighbor have content hmm. praise the lord so god is giving us wisdom God is giving us keys that will distinguish us. Let's get to work tonight. Father, thank you. Tonight's teaching seeks to open us up to the dynamics of greatness. I want to share with us in detail how God announces men and how God makes men great. It's not just you will be great. I want to show you how it happens. Praise the Lord. And I want you to follow me because, you know, I sense in my spirit, I've been saying this thing like the Ark of Noah, that I know that it will happen this year, that a season is coming and it's going to be so fast what the Lord is going to do. Remember the scripture I shared with us that the Lord told me, that will increase my greatness and comfort me on every side. Hallelujah. Thank you for lifting Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting my head. 
Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. I thank you for lifting. Hallelujah. Ah, what you will hear tonight will so bless you. I'm no, 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 no. Don't shout amen. It's something I'm about to start teaching. <laughs> you know, sometimes these things scatter my head. You know how someone takes all of you who were in the world, who God delivered you and ransomed you from all kinds of nonsense. You know, praise the Lord. You see a madman on the road alone and he's just singing and bouncing even if he's inside a gutter. He's just singing and in his mind he's in a world all by himself. That's what the word of God does. He said, I found your word and I did eat them and it was a joy and a rejoicing to my soul. Hmm. He said, my son, eat thou honey for it is good for you. Eat thou honey. There is what you can know. You don't need anything to happen physically. Are you getting my point? It's like a farmer who plants, pastor. You don't plant a tree and then you come and you are wondering. You are so anxious. People look at you and you say, ah, will this thing grow? No. The man just goes to start buying bags in preparation because he knows that the ground was commanded to produce. Are you getting my point? So, there are things that when you know, you start rejoicing and dancing. Because for, for it not to manifest is like saying Jesus didn't die on the cross. Is that guaranteed? Hallelujah. Let's get to the word of God. Thank you, Jesus Christ. What is the secret of greatness? What does it even mean to be great, really? What does it mean to be great? You know, we talk about greatness. What does it mean to be great? Because we have to understand, in the kingdom, what does it mean to be great? Hallelujah. To be great means to have an enlarged sphere of influence. To have an enlarged sphere of influence. He said, thou shall increase my greatness. An enlarged sphere of influence. To be great means to have increased access. To be great means to have increased access. Access to anything. Resources, people. Please make sure you write. To be great means to have what? Increased sphere of influence. And it also means to have increased access. Access to whatever. Resources, people, opportunities. Hallelujah. And why is greatness important in the kingdom? We must get this. You know, everything we discuss, we discuss with respect to the kingdom. Why is it necessary? Listen. Do not let anybody preach you out of the sincere desire to be great. Because sometimes in a bit to show that we are Christians, we say, Lord, please don't make me great. Let me not fall into sin. Let me not do this. Kingdom advancement is highly dependent on kingdom influence. It takes greatness and influence to enforce the kingdom. You must understand this. No one will truly be able to influence this system and bring in the value system of the kingdom without increase, without influence and greatness. The Bible says, and the boy Jesus, for him to be able to carry out his assignment, he had to grow in wisdom. He had to grow in what? Stature. Not just the word stature there does not mean um, physical growth. No. No. The word stature there means influence. A time came in the life of Jesus. They said, all men seek for thee. He was on the mountain and 5,000 men aside women and children came. Everybody say influence. It is very important to understand the components that the prophetic agenda of God is dependent upon. So that we will not just be religious. Now, there are people who want to be great just because they have suffered too much. 
while that is not a wrong reason it's not it's not it does not qualify to be an ultimate motivation when you come into the kingdom to say i've suffered too much i must be great in life that's ambitious it's wonderful except for the fact that when you come into the kingdom you must edit your motive to suit the desire of the king hallelujah so god wants us to be great without greatness listen without greatness he told abraham he said i will make your name i will give you an identity of greatness and that greatness will call the attention of the kings and the people around and they will come to see what your god is doing he said it shall come to pass in that day that the mountain of the lord's house have you read that scripture the mountain of the lord's house shall do what be exalted above all other mountains and as a result men will flow to it until the mountain is exalted men cannot flow to it are you getting what i'm saying now it is easy to listen to a great man than to listen to a man who is struggling with greatness is that true so the lord wants to increase our greatness our greatness in every ramification financially spiritually and otherwise oh i receive what he wants to give i receive it no religion would preach me out of this no piety no sense of false holiness will push me out of the revelation it is as a result of the my love for the king that i need to gain an influence across the mountains that he has given me the authority to legislate so that they will hear the word of the Lord. Distant shores and the islands will see your light. Don Moen got it precisely. That's what will happen to you. Distant shores and the islands will see your light. As it rises on Thank you, Jesus Christ. So what is the secret of greatness? How? I know that we keep, you know, the, the, issue, the issue I have with the body of Christ is that we do a lot of preaching, but we do very little of teaching. You know what it means to preach? To preach means to declare. It means to proclaim. It means to bring you into an awareness of a reality. That's what it means to preach. But to teach means to give you understanding of the operation of that thing. Hallelujah. That's the challenge with the body of Christ. We do a lot of preaching. God wants to make you great. How many of you believe you are going to be great? Say me. Say now lift up your hands. Be great. And the person says amen. That's preaching. Wonderful preaching. Except for the fact that it does not work like that in the that's not how your lecturer taught you. He didn't come to the class and say, how many of you are interested in having a degree? He says, sir, me, oh, me, I've, I've been writing jam. And he said, are you serious? He said, all right. This course is yours. No, you don't, you don't behave like that. Hallelujah. You sit down through seasons of dealings that will prune you. You will cry through the rain, but you will remain there for the excellency of something that is greater than your pain. Hallelujah. How come life teaches us an obvious way to be great? But when it comes to the kingdom, we don't pay attention to the teaching of the word. Carry a weak hundred level student, pastor, as weak as whatever. Sit that student down for six years under a medical curriculum and you produce a doctor. Bold enough to confront sicknesses and diseases. The same person who will see someone six years ago convulse and be confused and not know what to do. Six years later, he sees someone convulsing and while everybody is moving, he says, no, no, I know what to do. Everybody say knowledge. Knowledge keeps you in charge. So what other people are running away from you stand. You say, uh-uh, I'm not ignorant. I know exactly what to do. The Bible says Jesus himself knew what to do. May you know what to do in this life. It's dangerous not to know what to do. When the devil throws sickness, may you know what to do. When poverty attempts to come, may you know what to do. 
when death and all these things that kill men, if you don't know what to do, it will kill you. Don't let anybody preach you out of this truth. It's on the strength of what you know that you reign in this life. He said, rule thou in the midst of your enemies. And he made two great lights. One to rule in the day and the other to rule in the night. When you have that light, you will rule both in the day and the night. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Say after me, God wants me to be great for the sake of his kingdom. Say it again, God wants me to be great for the sake of the kingdom. And I choose to cooperate with him. I made some very interesting discoveries. One of my goals in life is not to waste my time on earth. One of my very personal goals in life is that I'm not going to join the crowd of people wasting their time on earth. This is how they do it. This is how they do it. Uh -uh. I choose to be like the Bereans. The Bible says they sat down to find out how is this thing done. So you don't waste 30 or 40 or 50 or 60 years of your life then you find out that you've been making a mistake for 60 years and you have to go back and begin to undo your life. Hallelujah. There are people who have time but they do not have the knowledge and the information to make them great. By the time they spend all the time in their dying days, they get the knowledge but there is no time to put it to work. You have time and God is granting you knowledge. Take advantage of it. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The secret to greatness in the kingdom is encapsulated in one word. And I know you've heard that word, but tonight, just keep away what you've heard and listen and let's explore the word. The secret of greatness in the kingdom is hidden in one word. And that word is called favor. Write it down. We're going to be exploring something tonight. The secret of greatness in the kingdom is shrouded in one word. Favor. Ah, open our eyes tonight in the name of Jesus. Bring the days of struggling to an end. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The secret to greatness in the kingdom is favor. Hmm. What is favor? Favor means access beyond your efforts. When you gain access beyond your efforts. Many of us have had a lot of messages about favor. But many of them have not been balanced. And so we know so much about favor, but we see very little or none of it in our lives. Hallelujah. The first thing I want you to know about favor is that favor is not a mystery. This is one of the things we have been taught by well-meaning people that favor in the kingdom. The fact that it is undeserved does not mean it cannot be activated. Thank you, Jesus. Favor means access beyond your efforts. It means divine approval. Unmerited access. Favor is unmerited. But it must be activated to walk in your life. So many of us have been taught that somehow in the journey of your life, favor just finds its way to your life. You may wait forever and never see that favor. Although it is unmerited, there are laws that activate its coming. It is the operation, the, the dispensing of favor that you cannot explain. And I will tell you why. But the initiation and the maintenance of that realm of favor is absolutely predictable. Absolutely. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Is someone getting blessed already? 
The Bible teaches us that there are two levels of favor. Luke chapter 2 verse 52. Please let's have it. If you can have it in Amplified. If there's no Amplified, no problem. I want to hurry up because I want to dwell on certain things. This is just an introduction. There are two levels of favor or two dimensions to favor as, as revealed in the word of God. Okay, let's, let's just open up so we can hurry up. I don't want us to wait here too long tonight. Okay. Please just look up so we'll hurry up. Everyone, let's read. One, two, read. And Jesus increased in wisdom, in broad and full understanding, and in stature and years, and in with and favor with who? And so the Bible shows us that there are two levels of favor. Please get this. There is favor with God. Everybody right. And there is favor with men. And these two levels operate on different sets of laws. It is absolutely possible to have favor with God and not have favor with men. And it is absolutely possible to have favor with men and not have favor with God. Someone getting blessed tonight. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Favor with God and favor with men. Since we have established that the key, the secret to greatness in the kingdom is favor. Everybody say the secret to my greatness is favor. Say it convincingly. The secret to my greatness is favor. Hallelujah. Oh, how true. How true. You neglect this truth to your own detriment. Let hope rise. Darkness trembles in your holy light. Hope is rising for someone tonight. So let hope rise. Darkness trembles in your holy light. How do you secure favor with God? This is the first part. Let's discuss it very quickly. How do you secure favor with God? We are being very mathematical in our approach this night. So the secret to greatness is favor. We are examining that subject since that is the key that holds our greatness in the kingdom. And we have seen that according to Luke 2.52, there is favor with God and favor with men. So how do we secure favor with God? Number one, you want favor with God, you need three keys. The first key is that you must have the fear of the Lord. Please don't make a mistake about this. You want favor with God. The first requirement. Are you seeing now that favor with God is not free? Huh? I get very, very disturbed at the gospel that makes believers irresponsible. Just makes them believe that everything can just happen like that. No, sir. If everything just happens like that, God has to apologize to the little children and the countries that die. Is that true? If it was entirely God that controls the distribution of wealth, then God will have to apologize as to why a terrorist group will be so rich and a ministry will be so broke. Are you getting my point now? The heaven of heavens is the Lord. But the Bible says the earth has he given to the sons of men. The fear of the Lord Proverbs chapter 9 verse 10. Media, you help us please. We need a lot of speed here. Proverbs chapter 9 verse 10. You must possess the fear of the Lord. You want to secure favor with God. Proverbs 9 verse 10. The reverent and worshipful fear of the Lord. Let's just use um, 
King James, except where we went from the fight, so that we rush. The fear of the Lord is what? The beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. You want to be wise? You want to walk in wisdom? The Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning. It takes wisdom for you to even explore the mysteries of the kingdom. And the Bible says the fear of the Lord is what gives you that access. That's where your journey begins. Everybody say the fear of the Lord. What does it mean to fear God? It doesn't mean to run away from God. To fear God means to have respect. You can replace that word fear with the word reverence and loyalty. It doesn't mean to run away from him. No. The fear of the Lord means to have respect. Hallelujah. I will reverence you, Lord. I will reverence you, Lord. I will reverence you, Lord. For in your presence there is life everlasting. I will reverence. Can I tell you something? In the body of Christ, many people believe in Jesus, but very few people have respect for him. It's possible to believe a man and not respect that man. Is that true? You can believe in your boss. There's nothing you can do. Open the door of your office, he's the one sitting there. So you believe he's your boss. But there is this reverence, honor, respect. Let's look at something. The Bible says in Psalm 25, Psalm 25 verse 14. He said the secret things of the Lord are not with them that pray in tongues. Not with Christians. Not with those who fall under the anointing. Not with prophets. Not with apostles. The secret things of the Lord are not even with them who have faith. The secret things of the Lord. The things of the Lord are with many people. But the secret things... The hallowed bread of the spirit. They are with them that fear him. He said as, an, as a result he will show them. He never said the things of the Lord. There are, there are many things but the secret. Every great man has secret. It takes only a fool to share everything to everybody. You don't do that. You don't have visitors come into your house. And your mother says, come, let me even show you. We bought a new mattress. Come inside our bedroom. No. Hallelujah. But there are certain people because of the depth of reverence. Maybe a worker in the house who respects that man. You, the person can even have sons that are irresponsible. But he will call a house help into his bedroom. And say, let me show you something the secret things. There are chambers in the spirit, my brother. And everywhere is not accessible to everyone. Although we are in the kingdom, the secrets of the Lord. He said, I wept for no man was worthy to open the book. The book is there, but it, it's not everybody who opens it. Hallelujah. The clearest proof of your reverence for God is to keep his commands. I want to give you a spiritual litmus test. And let's look at that very quickly in John 14 verse 21. John 14 21. The clearest proof. Don't just say I fear God. No, there are exact parameters to measure. I love the kingdom. It doesn't leave you to confusion. You can know here and now. Right now. I don't care whether you've been a preacher for 20 years. I don't care whether you cry if any song is being raised. The Bible says, He that hath my what? So it's one thing to have it. Is that true? And does what? And keepeth them. He it is that loves me. That has respect and reverence for me. And as a result... He that loveth me shall be loved of my father and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. 
Is that in your scripture? That means God is saying, I will come. I will reveal dimensions to him. He that obeys me is he that loves me. It's not enough to just say, I love you. I fear you. I there are so many believers. Talk is cheap. First John 5 verse 3. The Bible gives us another very clear test. First John 5 verse 3. Oh, Shibakata Labakura Sidabaladabai. Somebody is changing in the name of Jesus. First John 5, verse 3. Can we read together? I want to read. For this is the what? Love of God that we keep his commandments. And the Bible says his commandments are not burdensome. The word grievous, there's the word burdensome. Hallelujah. He said, My yoke is easy and my burden is light. His commands are not burdensome. Please don't let anybody fool you. There are laws in the kingdom. I've said it. These things are, it's not the law of Old Testament. It, they are the laws that give structure to the kingdom. The laws of the kingdom are like the skeleton in a man's body. That's what gives form and structure in the kingdom. Hallelujah. You must have the fear of the Lord. You must have the spirit of reverence. So I can look at your life and know whether you fear God or not. Hallelujah. Don't say, ah, I, I fear God by faith. Even him, he knows. Uh -uh. There are exact parameters. You're not walking in his ways. You're not living by his principles and his value system. Don't tell me you fear God. When you can you don't know the difference between church and a disco hall. Between well, believers don't in this side of God's kingdom are not so involved in all those things again. But there are all kinds of things we do, and we believe. Listen, please and please, and I, I don't I don't mean this, I don't mean this to um to discredit ministers and ministries in the body of Christ, but I've said it again and again that the message of grace is only an accurate message if it is accepted as part of the full gospel are you getting my point the whole gospel must be preached there is a level to which the grace message is taught and just tells you oh don't concentrate on your love for god concentrate on his love for you and concentrate on all of that and you know anything will happen everything has been done wonderful what then is the reward of obedience why then is there hellfire if everything is like that god must apologize to ananias and sapphira don't you think so was it not in the new testament they fell down and they died why couldn't he have at least given them a chance maybe they will repent later on how could a loving god make the lake of fire hallelujah seven churches in, in the book of revelation when god began to talk to them he was focused on their works i know your works i know your works is, is that in your bible brothers and sisters be careful hallelujah honor the body of christ but you must realize that if the gospel is not taught holistically it can lead people into error. There are a lot of people missing it and dancing around in ignorance, believing. Are you getting my point? Let me share with you something that will surprise you. D.L. Moody. Many of you have read about him, right? D.L. Moody was a mighty evangelist of God. And he came and preached for decades. When D.L. Moody died, sir, after 10 years they decided to do a like a little census to follow up the converts of dl moody please listen this is this is not an exaggerated statement hallelujah and they found out that only one out of 10 converts of dl moody were still standing in the faith are you getting what i'm saying i respect him i honor him 
Hallelujah. It was, look at such a great man. After laboring, they found out that most of the people who were coming out in his meetings, only one out of ten remained safe and were still in the faith. We're not talking of people who built ministries. Those who were still eligible to make heaven according to the, the standards of the word of God. What happened to all the emotionalism that happened in those meetings? And then they took the same census for a man called Charles G. Finney. Hallelujah. And they found out most of the great men you see, most of the great men, they were products of that man's revival. When you got born again in his meeting, you hear everything that keeps you in the faith for life. Something is wrong with our gospel. It's not incorrect, but it's not complete either. There are missing sides that we must couple together. Brothers and sisters, listen to me. God is a loving God, but God is also a just God. Hallelujah. What I have just told you now is called the gospel of the kingdom. It switches dimension and lets you know that Jesus is not only a savior, but he is a king. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We have allowed people to do all kinds of things. There are believers today who have all kinds of pornography on their phones, their laptops. They watch it and the moment the Holy Spirit wants to convict them, they say, I'll never feel guilty. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Tomorrow they go back and do it again. Somebody goes, come on now, let's, let, uh, you, know, you trust me, I love you too much not to tell you the truth. People sleep around and do all kinds of things. And yes, God is a forgiving God. There is a difference between a challenge in your life and the spirit of rebellion at work in your life. Rebellion is a perpetual, willful, continual state of violating God's principles. And the consequence is hellfire. I don't care whether you're a pastor or whether you are whatever. Please take what I'm saying seriously. Hallelujah. Paul, the one who brought what we know as the Pauline epistles. If his gospel was so pleasant, I have a question. Why did they stone him? Have you ever wondered? Why did they stone him? What did he say that got the people angry? That they stoned him? Hallelujah. Why did they behead James? It wasn't just because they were angry at them. There was a content that we are missing today. And that's the reason. I'm telling you, this is why many believers are not powerful. Anything comes and just throws us down. Because there is a content of the gospel that needs to be re-examined. Now don't carry your zeal and go and listen to every message a man of God is preaching and you get up and say I know better that's foolishness I hope you understand that God is granting us maturity but I am just telling you that as much as the grace message is good it only makes sense when it is incorporated as the whole truth there are many other components of the kingdom what's the formula for water the chemical formula for water is what H2O is that true just add one more um, what now of oxygen it becomes H2O2 what is that? are you seeing that? same thing that can be water now for adding something wrong it can become poison at once and kill you everything in the kingdom must be taught within the dimensions that Jesus kept them hallelujah I'm saying this because there are people who will be listening to these teachings all across and some of you God is going to trust you with ministries you will have your churches please don't be afraid of being criticized you must stand and teach the truth are you getting me I remember somebody who sent me a text one day and said please um, I have a problem with you praying for people how do believers just manifest and you say you are casting out demons out of them is that really true I just sent the person my text. I said, I love you. We see from different perspectives in the kingdom. And God will help us. 
we operate from the perspectives that we see and that's all I said praise the Lord time is a revealer I hope you know that time time there are some things you should never talk about time just allow time to pass time that's why sometimes you say something and God keeps quiet hmm. people just say you will never make it and God never responds and you are saying God God has already spoken time is a language in this realm it can speak so loud brothers and sisters when we started this thing you are seeing I cannot tell you how many people criticize the things we are doing they say you won't last I, 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 I saw many zealous pastors those of you who were around those times you know that it was madness in this side of God's kingdom everybody was doing everything people carrying briefcases and ladies all around them I am this I am that people scrounging to go for radio programs and all of that and some of us look like fools but he has chosen the foolish things with everything with everything we will shout for your glory with everything with everything we will shout forth your praise oh 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 listen if i mislead you and i teach you error the god of heaven is going to judge me even if I don't love you, I love my destiny. Are you getting what I'm saying? The Bible says, as for the ancient paths and walk in it. I'll never forget one minister. I've, I've shared with you the story. That guy's ministry was grounded. Things were tight. There were all kinds of demonic things. But that guy would never accept that there was a demonic problem. No, no, there's nothing wrong. Nothing was happening. And one day he summoned courage to come for counseling. And so as soon as he entered, I saw a spirit enter with him. And he just came, just sat down. And then he was telling me all kinds of things. Things are not exactly working, this and that. I said, my brother, I need to pray for you. Ah! Guy felt embarrassed, his, his ego, you know. And you know, we get deceived because you touch somebody and the person falls. You just believe that it means God has finished working on you. Is that true? And I was going to pray for the person. The last thing he could remember was that he got down on his knees. Right? Scattered the place, scattered the room. And I, 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 I said, look at this is the same person who will argue and maybe insult me and write articles and write all kinds of things. This guy got up, went back to his ministry and boom! Goodness! How a man can sit down in ignorance for years. Whereas in two minutes of humility, your destiny can open up. How, how believers in the body have sat down in ignorance. Their salvation is closer to them than they can ever see. But it takes meekness to receive the word. You can be dying. There are families that can be dying in situations. Whereas the arm of the Lord is not short that it can save. What is keeping you from entering the next level of your life? Could it be that that brokenness, there is nothing wrong to accept that, oh, this is what I used to believe, but I've seen clearer now. Lord, help your body in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's hurry up. We're still talking about how to secure favor with God. We have to rush. Number two, you must have faith in God. You want to secure the favor of the save, the um, the favor of God in your life. Remember, we're talking about favor with God. You must have faith in God. It's very important. 
James 5 verse 4 tells us this is the victory that overcomes. And it says, even our faith. You know what it means to have faith in God? I'm going to explain it to you. The first revelation of having faith in God is to trust Him. It's as simple as that. Trust Him. Don't complicate your faith experience. It means trust Him. Proverbs chapter 3 from verse 5. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Verse 6 says, in all your ways, not some, in all your ways, recognize him, acknowledge him and his reward for your acknowledging him is that he will make straight your path. And then verse 7 says, it's a warning. It says, be not wise in your own understanding. Fear the Lord and turn away from him. Be not wise. In your own understanding that means you can feel you are wise in your own understanding but it says fear the Lord and that fear of the Lord will make you turn away from evil hallelujah Hebrews 11 verse 6 tells us that without faith it is impossible to please him for he that cometh unto God must believe that he is in other words that he exists and then number two that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. It takes faith. Hallelujah. It takes faith in God. It takes faith in God. Very important. You must trust in the Lord. Psalms 125 verse 1. It said, They that trust in the Lord shall be like Mount Zion that cannot be shaken. Hallelujah. Hallelujah very important they that trust in the lord when you have faith in god it gives you stability through all of the boisterous winds that blow around our lives where are we okay they that trust in the lord shall be as mount zion which shall not be removed or shaken but abides forever do you trust in the lord what is faith first and foremost let me tell you Faith is never faith until it can be seen or heard. Let me shock you right now. Faith is never faith until it can be seen or heard. Faith comes from the Greek word pistis. Hallelujah. What that means is your faith is your persuasion or conviction plus the corresponding action you take based on that conviction. Are you getting my point now? If you have not acted on faith, it's called belief. It's not called faith. Are you getting me? Belief is just your persuasion. When you act based on that belief, it becomes faith. So the Bible says, have faith in God. Become persuaded so much in the character of God that you take steps based on that conviction. So the equation of faith is revelation plus conviction or persuasion then plus corresponding action write it and never forget because faith comes when you hear the word of god so it starts with revelation then that revelation brings conviction or persuasion you are convinced about this reality you just heard about convinced enough to take steps then the bible calls that Without the action component is called belief. What many people are doing that they call faith is belief. That means not acting on the word of God is the clearest proof that you don't trust God. Not acting on the word of God is the clearest proof biblically that you do not trust God. so many people hear the word of god and we claim to be convinced let me tell you in this life the moment you are convinced about a thing action is almost automatic hallelujah a guy sees a lady and thinks he likes her and he keeps nursing that persuasion 
until it pushes him to say, Sister, please, after Koinonia, I'll be at this door. Will you mind passing there? That's action. Three guys saw the lady and said, Wow, nice lady. I saw the way, you know, she's fine and she likes God praying. It's nice when a fine lady is praying. And that's all. He stopped and they all moved. But he was convinced and he said, Look, I'm going to take a step further. Right? And he meets the lady. And then they get married. What is that? Action. Whereas there is another brother who kept saying, Me, even me, God knows from the depths of my heart, this is my wife. And you watch somebody complete the equation and carry your wife. I just spoke about marriage. Some of you have woken up now. Ah! Brothers, you need this message before you carry any man's daughter to the altar. That statement you make at the altar is so implicating. It will take a long time for you to see the, the significance of that vow. Don't let your tithe deceive you. You are standing there just talking. Will you do this? Everybody, you are just telling everybody, I'm getting married. After the marriage, the rubber will hit the road. Your eye will clear. My friend, the Jimmy says, love is blind, but marriage will open your eyes. Praise God. So let's hurry up. Number three, I'm going to shock you now. You want to secure favor with God? The third principle is the tithe. T-I-T-H-E. Ah. How many of us have been taught in our churches and our different groups that tithe helps you to secure favor with God? Even those who have taught about tithe just preach about it because there are bills that need to be paid and they say you need to pay your tithe. If you don't pay your tithe, you don't pay your tithe and see whether God will bless you. And you see the anger with which the man is preaching and God tells you, please, please, pay this tithe. Every church, every ministry, their prosperity is dependent on their own obedience to the principles of the kingdom. My prosperity as a minister of the gospel is not dependent on koinonia people. Ah, that would have been a terrible way to live. I would have been frowning at you people every week. What did you drop last week? You know? There are many men of God who are burdens to their congregations because they do not realize that their prosperity is tied to their own personal obedience. Can I be sincere with you? Many men of God don't tithe. Hallelujah. Many men of God don't tithe. They teach tithing. Do you know how long it took me as a man of God to be consistent in tithing? I want to be sincere with you. You know I fear God and I honor God. When I saw how difficult it was to tithe, with all the fear that I had for God, I said, man... That means many people, somebody is lying somewhere in this equation. It takes the giving grace to come upon your life. One, two, it takes you designing a system to make your tithing efficient. Are you getting my point? You don't tithe just, no, 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 no. The first thing I want you to understand about tithing is that tithing is not a debt you are paying. Many people come before God with tithe. Help me with one, one of these envelopes. And they, they bring the tithe. Thank you. Don't worry. They bring the tithe and they just stand frowning. Okay, God, please, so you will not harass me. Take. And once they pray, they say it's blessed. The way you just drop this in the offering basket. Your tithe secures favor with God. You want to be on God's side, brothers and sisters. Not being on God's side is disastrous. It's not just about finances. There is a spirit called the devourer is alive and active in the earth hallelujah i must talk about this your tithe is not the payment of a debt because everything we owe belongs to god your tithe is an acknowledgement it's a documentation of your gratitude you're saying lord in obedience to you and for your faithfulness i bring 10 percent Brothers and sisters, hear me. Let me kneel down. Look at me. I'm kneeling down. Snap me so that you see it on, on the... Don't, don't me with your phone. 
I'm pleading with you in the name of the Lord God. If you love God, I beg you in the name of Jesus Christ, be consistent in your time. See, I'm getting down on my knees and I'm begging you. Ah, you've been snapping, oh, Joe. <laughs> okay, let me just hands up so that you know that I'm kneeling down. Be faithful. Don't think tithing is a gimmick by a preacher. I can tell you this. Ask the financial department. By the grace of God as a ministry, we do not owe God one naira. I don't care what collection is made for what. The tithe of God. Before anything happens, you really think we are running this ministry from the... Look, you know what you are dropping in the offering basket. At least you don't know your neighbor's home, but you know your own. You can't run ministry with things people are throwing. No. There is a mystery of divine supply. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You must believe this. I was sharing some of the testimonies with Pastor Williams. Benefits of tithing. I remember one time we were just praying and, and trusting God. There were things here and there to, 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 to get and all of that. And we were just saying, oh Lord, we thank you because we are tithers, we are faithful. Till today, I was sharing with you, Pastor. Till today, we do not know the person. We just got an alert. 1.5 million by an unknown person we do not know into the ministry account. Whereas... That's somebody's labor. Somebody who is collecting 50,000. How much is his salary? That calculate it. For more than one year. For being faithful in time. I think I was talking to the protocol department. They went to purchase something in Abuja. And then I was talking to them. The mixer. He just got a better mixer. Very good one. And then I, I was talking to them. I think it was someone on my birthday. Pastor. Someone just, Right? Yes. And the person just said, ah, they just paid some money for their family that they were hoping, you know, 3.4 million naira. And the person just said, oh, well, thank God for all the words you are speaking, the things you are teaching us. And was just sending the tithe and all of that. Let me tell you, when you see what we are doing, because I know many of you sit there and wonder, how do these people really get money? Yes, God is faithful, but what is the one plus one of it? Let me tell you, the one plus one of it is what I'm teaching you here. The tithe. If you are not a faithful tither, God is not authorized to bless you. Stop wasting your time in praying and fasting for wealth. If you are not a tither, I want you to know the devourer will stand and stare at your face. If you like, put a Bible on your head. Prayer is not the seed for financial breakthrough. Prayer is the seed for fellowship with the Spirit and spiritual awakening and the presence of God and activating the anointing, not prosperity. Your tithe, your giving are the seeds for increase many people who want to be blessed will argue this thing and you ask the person how much do you have how much has entered your hand that you are arguing you are saying it's not correct it's a terrible thing when you don't have results and you are still arguing blessed is he who comes in the name of our God blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. When you pay your tithe, you're securing favor with God. Please and please and please teach this to anyone you love and make up your mind from today. Your tithe is a tenth portion, one tenth of your income that secures open heavens favor with God tie because it guarantees God's continuous favor in your life oh I don't want to be outside of the favor of God it's dangerous it's a risky position it's like being face to face with a lion imagine how many devils of darkness will want on their own to destroy my life I found a place of refuge I found a way of walking under and open heavens. Do you know the wickedness? 
the arrows that fly by day the noisome pestilence do you know how many people want to see your downfall if there is no spiritual way of keeping yourself standing you will fall like a leaf are you getting what i'm saying how many people use all their monies for sickness all their monies for no no open heavens say after me in the name of jesus i make up my mind to be faithful in tithing say it again in the name of jesus see the truth is many of us are not consistent our tithing life is up down up down that's why today it looks like some doors of favor open up and then tomorrow it's not god's fault jc penny many of you have heard about him jc penny one of the multi-billionaires who love God. He was tithing and at a point, something happened and he said he wanted to experiment with God. He stopped tithing. That was how his business just was died like that to a point that he was almost crashing. And he said, wow. And he started tithing. And that was how he, he got himself back. You better believe what I'm telling you many of our parents do not tithe from their salaries they are collecting 150,000 yet they cannot afford 5,000 you ask them for 5,000 they will almost kill you because a devourer has eaten everything in one day two tires just patch and all the money has gone just when you are coming something happens arrows that fly by day and they now look and they say sorry you need you need this and that you will be spent and all the money goes then the moment the money goes the person gets well by himself the devourer and you are praying and fasting and conducting night vigils and running around your parlor in the night rather than obedience that is better than sacrifice many of us can prefer to run marathon prayers from 11 to 6 to try to solve something that faithfulness in time Many of our fathers have brought predicaments upon the family because they are not faithful in time. A solid building, a solid structure, small rain just comes and washes everything just when they wanted to finish the thing. Back to square one. There are even those that physical money disappears. Have you heard that story? Somebody keeps one million, he comes back and finds 780,000. Someone came for counseling. I've never had that thing. The woman said rats eat her money. No, serious. I'm, I'm not joking. I'm not joking at all. Rats. You come in the morning and you see pieces of what sort of devil tithing. I think it was either Paul Enencho or, or, or Bishop David Oyeriko that shared something that some armed robbers came and they were going to, I think, um, destroy a woman or capture one family and the woman shouted she took her tight booklet lifted it up and dropped it on the ground and said God watch the people match this booklet and come and touch me at once confusion came on the people they were afraid and that was how they left brothers and sisters what you do not believe will not work for you oh I believe the word of God I'm that minister of the gospel that believes every word of Jesus. Are you getting blessed? Leviticus 27 verse 30. Let's finish up on the issue of tithe very quickly. Leviticus 27 verse 30. Let me show you how the devil has been cheating many of us. Tithe heals you from greed. Everyone, let's read. One to read. Is the Lord's and it is holy unto God. So when I take my tithe, I say, Lord, I'm documenting my gratitude. I honor you. I thank you. How many of our parents receive some money? Maybe one money that is spending, it just comes in. Seven million. And they just calculate use calculator 700,000 me go and give that man of God I, I'm not stupid Abba 700,000 and you see the person arguing and within three weeks he has spent over one million naira on his health and robbers will come and put a gun and say 
we saw through the jazz that we use that there's seven million in this. I said, No, it's only four. No, now slap you say truly it's, it's seven. Where is it? He said, That's it here. Take it, take it, and preserve my life. Whereas the tithe of it. Are you seeing how many of our family members put us in trouble? I say this, many of us keep wondering, why is my father walking? Why is my mother walking? The truth is that they are all walking. They've never been driven from job, but not even a house to build. The mysteries of the kingdom. There is no favor. The heavens are closed. So many believers operating under closed heaven. There are many ministries. They are so tight, no supplies. They beg for everything. Squeeze people, put people, workers and all of that under every kind of pressure. Because the man of God is not tithing. The people are not tithing. The ministry is not tithing. Dr. Mike Mudok was sharing and he said there was a time the finance of his ministry was going down. It was going down so bad and he checked and then he called the finance department. He said something is wrong. We are not doing something right. What is wrong? Hallelujah. And the financial secretary said, Well, sir, um, for about three months now, we've not been paying tight because the bills are enormous. And honestly, if we are to pay tight, you may, we may shut you down from TV and all of that. And my mother said, Because of that, you stop paying the tight. That means we are going to crash to zero. The day we stop paying tight as a ministry, I give you one to two months. It will never happen. That's why I have the confidence to say it. Maybe one day you come and you just see no fuel for generator or no chairs. Ah! No. As surely as the God of heaven lives, we have created a system that does not depend on our personal emotions again. Is someone learning something? Is your heavens open? Pastor, is your heaven open? Over your family. There are many people who do not tithe. They pay school fees. 250 naira. The, the child, brilliant boy, is coming back with one dull result. 0, 0, 0, 0, 39, 41. That's the average. What is happening? All kinds of witchcraft activities flying freely. Because the heavens are closed are you getting blessed with what i'm saying you want to secure favor with god you must be faithful we've not talked about favor with men no and that's really where i want to dwell tonight that's why i'm rushing i'm not teaching on finances so i'll stop here for you. we are going to pray just in one minute before we continue many of us need to repent because the financial stress in our family it's not because of the job. It's not. It's not because they didn't promote your father. I'm telling you the truth. If we don't take responsibility, we will keep giving. It's easy to blame people for our financial predicament. Are you getting my point? It's so easy. If that they promoted me, I would have been collecting 200,000 now. Instead of 150, my life would have been better. So wrong. So wrong. You collect one million under a closed heaven and you will see the way the devil will make a caricature of your life. Lift up your voice in one minute and say, Lord, I repent. Be sincere with yourself. Some of us need to pray on behalf of our families. Please be sincere. Lord, I've not been faithful. Tithing. I don't know what it is, oh God, but I find out that it's so hard. I've not had the revelation. I'm not yet convinced. I think it's a gimmick by a man of God or a ministry. I think it's just a gimmick. Koinonia is trying to squeeze out money from me. No. Go ahead and pray. Because there are many of us, no matter how many miracle services you come, I'm telling you, the heavens are closed. The heavens are closed. There is no favor with God. That's why the doors that were opened before they are not even open again. Be sincere with yourself. There were strange manifestations of favor from God. They are not even there again. Your shop that used to sell, nothing is selling again because you think you don't tithe for your business. 
now the heavens are closed look at many of our parents you buy a new gadget you bring the machine everything breaks down this is the devourer brothers and sisters let's take responsibility tonight and say lord we cry for help the finance of families are finished because of paying for drugs and sicknesses paying for damaged cars paying for all kinds of things pray and say lord i want your favor from tonight i repent i receive the giving grace to be a delight some tighter i realize that this is the key i don't care who you are i don't care what you read i don't care what your level of anointing is i don't care how hardened your heart is if you want to experience favor with god i'm telling you one of the keys is you must be a consistent tighter you must design a system around your life if there are needs in your life that's the more that's that's the more reason to tie don't say the needs are too much man of god is because you don't know i have so much needs i must do this and that touch your way out of that trouble touch your way out of that trouble eating your tight will only get you deeper i promise you you can apply every business principle you know fail to tight and watch the devourer scatter your life and your family but you'll be faithful towards tithing and watch God turn any situation around it doesn't take time commit God into your life anything God is involved in must succeed many of us God is not committed in the affairs of our lives I don't want to know what you are going through now tithe your way out of it secure the favor of the almighty hallelujah praise the lord please let me challenge you create a system if you do internet banking you can have the account details of the ministry or whatever or if it is here you tight the, the the ministry's account details are available to it. if you do internet banking transfer it immediately otherwise buy envelopes buy envelopes i always have a stash of envelopes praise god the treasurer is here we created a system i don't even see the tithe as it is counted we take it and 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 sow it to the appropriate ministry brothers and sisters please listen to me are you not tired of what you have seen your loved ones go through didn't they go to school didn't they get all the degrees look at everything see how helpless people are because they know not neither will they understand and the bible says they grow in darkness and the earth is out of course let's finish the last part how do you activate and secure favor with men i must talk about this spoke about three things right now to secure favor with God that number one you must have the fear of God the fear of the Lord number two you must have faith in God you must trust him number three you must be a consistent titan but when it comes to finding favor with men the rule is different if you have been sleeping this is the time to wake up I believe with all my heart that your destiny depends on this revelation I'm sharing tonight Daniel chapter 1 open our eyes oh God Daniel chapter 1 help us grant us grace someone is walking in undeniable realms of favor after today in the name of Jesus Christ I want to share with you something very powerful how do you secure favor with men in the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, unto Jerusalem and besieged it. Verse 2. And the Lord gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hands 
with part of the vessels of the house of God, which he carried into the land of China to the house of his God. And he brought the vessels into the treasure of his God. Verse 3. And the king, listen now, spake unto Ashpenaz, the master of the eunuchs, that he should bring certain of the children of Israel. So the king is inviting some people to stand before the king. Hallelujah. And the kings, and of the king's seed, and of the princes. Verse 4. Everyone read. One, two, read. Children in whom was no blemish, but well favored, and skillful in all wisdom, and cunning in knowledge, and understanding science, and such as had ability, take note, in them to stand in the king's palace. It takes an ability. Are you seeing that? He said those who have what? Ability to stand in the king's palace. And whom they might teach the learning and the tongue of the Chaldeans. Let's stop there. Look up. There is a mystery to securing favor with men. And I want you to get this very straight. There were many people who were captured. But notice what Nebuchadnezzar said. He said there are a kind of people I want. The king that we captured now, I want all the people that walked in his palace because they have been trained according to the life of royalty. Bring them. I want certain choice guys that came from Israel. There were certain things that the eunuchs were looking at. Brothers and sisters, there is a price to secure favor with men. Can I tell you something? Favor is the currency to get money. Think about what I said very carefully. Favor is the currency to get money. Write this down, please. The ultimate key to entering the realm of favor with men never forget this for as long as you live. If you pay attention to this, we will celebrate together as the great ones in the future. But you neglect this, you will be part of those quarreling those who will be the great ones. Listen. The ultimate key to entering the realm of favor with men is to possess the ability to provide solutions and solve their problems. Write it down. The ultimate key, I'll say it again, to entering the realm of favor with men is to possess the ability to solve their problems and provide solutions. Oh, Shiva. Write this down. Solve problems, then write three ellipses. Provide solutions. Let's discuss this briefly. when I saw this we would tie it up by showing you how God announces men in the kingdom the ultimate key brothers and sisters hear me every man in scripture who became great became great because he was favored he found favor with men and every man who found favor with men had something to exchange for that favor is someone getting what I'm saying? Joseph would have died in the prison if he never had the ability to interpret dreams. Daniel would never rise to reign in a strange land through the dispensation of three kings if he had no ability to solve problems. I say this all the time and some of us neglect it. Write that word down, ability. Ability. This is your key to finding favor with men and entering the realm of greatness. Gender, notwithstanding. Background, notwithstanding. Age, notwithstanding. 
nationality notwithstanding hallelujah until you solve a problem you remain insignificant and unnoticed if you are not providing solution brothers and sisters nobody needs you the world is so desperate for solutions they will only run towards the direction of those who are solving problems the greater problems you solve the greater you become magnetic please understand this if you think you will people will invite you into their presence just because they like you or because you are a christian you are dreaming wake up hello <laughs> you know many of us have this funny understanding that because i'm serving god one day great men will call me ay, 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 ay. start reading your bible very carefully and you will find out that no great man appeared before the king just like that there was an ability that qualified him to stand before the king i have a question what will qualify you to stand before men who can honor you and bring you into greatness are you getting my point the reason why you may be insignificant as you think is because your ability has not brought you to a position of notoriety please hear, hear what i'm saying all men are equal but their graces and abilities separate them and make certain things possible for others your ability that anointing that skill that grace that gift is what you will use to access favor with men there are people today by the grace of God who have come to see me and I know that if not for the grace of God there is nothing I will have in exchange for the level of the honor of those people not at this level of my life are you getting what I'm saying there are offices and places that I access today and bump into those people and i know the level of great men in themselves who cannot access those offices the gift of a man can make room for him and bring him before great men your gift can add to your age your gift can qualify you where you do not qualify and the king sent for Joseph and they brought him out of his dungeon. We must understand this. Then I will show you how God lifts people in the kingdom. Say in the name of Jesus. I have an ability that will bring me before great men. Say one more time. In the name of Jesus. I have an anointing. I have grace. I have an ability that will bring me before great men i have entered places today that my father may never enter perhaps i have entered places today that with all humility my contemporaries maybe may never enter their lifetime because of the gift of god I am look when you possess this ability they told jesus they said all men seek for thee all men they will pay you for it they will pay you in millions and think it's a privilege that they are honoring you and you will be surprised you're wondering my goodness but there is an ability and because they need it they will look for you there are 7 billion people in the earth. But more than 90% of those people are looking for solutions. That's big business, brother. If you can become a solution provider, you become magnetic. 
See the darkness in Nigeria. Look, let me tell you. If you have a ministry that spits saliva on people's face and they get healed, spit it on 20 people and let them get healed and you will see the level of intelligent people who will come and stand for days waiting to be healed. Many of us do not know the level of darkness that is upon the earth. Please listen. The Spirit of God is moving in this place right now because I, I want to share something very powerful. There is an anointing you have that can bail you forever. There is an anointing. The ability that makes you to stand before kings. You will not be the one looking for them. The Gentiles will come not to you, to your light. That's what they want, not you. If you think people come because they like you, there are many people who come for Koinonia not because they like me. Oh. You will be amazed to see how many people came to Jesus. King of the Jews, you are this and that. When it looked like Jesus' ministry was nosediving, they say, I beg, crucify him. Let his blood even be upon our head. Please listen. Let me just advise you. If you think you have a crowd or people love you because of you, there are very few people in your lifetime who will love you because of your personality. Many people will love you because of what you carry. Are you getting my point? See, Baba, Baba, there is this treasure in earthen vessels so that you will end some things in your life. I will never be a failure in this life forever. I know it. I know it. Rich men have problems that I can solve. Ah, yes. Yes. Great men have problems that I can solve. I cannot solve every problem. But brothers and sisters, there are problems I can solve. Now, watch this. Let me explain to you the equation, what I call the equation of greatness. You will be so blessed. Just give me a few minutes and we'll pray now. Ecclesiastes 9 verse 1, media, project it. I love the Lord. When I did this study, my heart dropped. I said, oh God, I'm sorry for all the times that I kept blaming you for so many things. Ecclesiastes 9 11 verse 11 did I say 1? 11 please verse 11 everybody please read I returned and saw under the that the race is not to the swift nor the battle to the strong neither yet bread to the wise nor yet riches to men of understanding nor yet favor to men of skill this is the mystery we're about to discuss now everybody read it but time and chance i want to show you the mystery of greatness listen repeat this last clause again one to go time one more time but time and chance happens to who how many everybody now replace the word chance where are we now okay but time and chance replace the word chance with opportunity are you ready now one to read i want you to replace the word time with the word seasons are you ready now one to read but seasons and opportunities happen to them all. But seasons, like the hand of a clock, it has been designed by the sovereign act of God that for every man upon the surface of the earth, there is the turning of the hand of the clock and that one day, time and opportunity will always happen to them. Ah. Holy Spirit. Time and chance. The 
the Bible says it happens to some, happens to everybody. That means there is a guarantee. Please listen. Somebody's deliverance is coming. There is a guarantee based on the word of God that a day must come if God is God. Where time and chance. You know how they do cooperative society. Five of us bring 20, 20,000. It's now your own turn. It's now your own turn. And I start smiling, although it's not my turn. Because I know that my turn is coming for sure. And the Bible says, time and chance. So in the equation of greatness, we are bringing the constant factors. And then we work on the variables. We are doing a little mathematics here. Are you getting my point? It says, time and chance. This one, no devil can stop it. No habal is from your village. You don't need to pray about it. He said, time. If you are under the sun, time and chance happen to them. Ah, I show you a mystery. Ah. So time, that means a time will come in my life, whether I'm prepared or not whether i pray for it or not whether i fast for it or not a time will come where the hand of god will navigate opportunities whether i see it or not is irrelevant god's justice must be done therefore the bible for once us is a redeeming the time now that you know that a day will come this is where a lot of people miss it we keep focusing on looking at the day the bible says it will come remove that in the equation of your preparation for greatness and begin to focus on taking advantage of that day it will come the equation of greatness let's look at um okay greatness therefore in the kingdom comes by number one god Margin seasons and opportunities together and then number two you finding favor by securing that opportunity I'm going to explain myself let me have somebody please okay Aaron come hallelujah watch this Let's assume this is spiritual timing. And according to God's justice system. Okay, stand here Aaron. Please, that this time is going to keep moving. Are you seeing it now? And that a day will come. It may take a long time. But that a day is going to come. When it will come to Aaron. And if Aaron misses on that opportunity. It will keep moving again. Are you getting what I'm saying? That's why if God wants to help you in life, he restores years, not what you lost. Yes. He tries to bring back the time so that the mistake you made, you can remedy it. He never said, I will restore the goods because they are not necessary. Once there is time and those seasons, is somebody understanding what I'm saying? Now, the problem with the body of Christ is that we all sit down being distracted at looking at the clock and waiting for the day it gets to our turn rather than getting busy to sharpen that ability so that the day the time comes you will enter the presence of greatness once and never come out again forever. Every man in the scripture that became great waited for that kairos moment joseph was in the prison but he knew there is an ability to interpret dreams it's only a matter of time the brother sold him he said no problem pharaoh's wife lied that he wanted to rape her no problem they threw him in the prison but when the season comes that part of the equation is god that starts moving that's favor with god are you seeing that now god made it in such a way that the wine presser had to do something wrong to go to the prison so while he was in the prison, the divine transaction started happening. And the wine presser came out 
although the one presser forgot about him but a day came let me tell you it does not take two days for you to enter greatness read the bible it always happened in one day there is always a day called one day he said john remained in the wilderness until his season of appearing there is, john was sharpening himself in the wilderness when the season came he came out and he completed his assignment one time jesus for 30 years was preparing for a season of three years 30 years read all the books knew all the law did everything and there was flawless victory within three and a half years so there are many of us sitting down looking at people's cars and say man i like this jeep goodness ah bmw this and that ford explorer 2014 limited edition look at that foolishness we are there claiming i claim it time and chance your turn is soon coming create an urgency sharpen the knife sharpen the anointing sharpen the healing anointing one day see let me tell you you may say there are many people the bible says in israel there were many widows but to none was the prophet sent god will send people specifically to you ah, and when you take advantage of that season that is it you are open to a dimension of grace i have studied almost every great ministry i admire and i found out that in the history of that ministry something always happened something happened at the kairos season and the men plunged into it with revelation and boom never to return again are you are you getting what i'm sharing with you ah i feel the anointing of the spirit if you sit down and you are wondering kai this house one day we are coming when will this come no 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 you never see me bother you insult yourself when you do that many young people here our dream is car right car let me buy car and you are trying to save how much can you save for the car you want i'm teaching you a higher law get out of all those 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 ways of frustration and misery that's why many people cannot give god glory they suffer for everything in their life come and adopt the kingdom's way there is a higher dimension there is a higher way believe me look let me tell you i'm a businessman i've read many business books so don't you think i'm just talking nonsense i know what i'm saying hallelujah when that kairos moment comes in your life when it comes in your ministry some people are snoring through the night the time will pass they wake up and an opportunity that took 10 years has just passed before it will come back again the first son is graduating from the university he has not learned his lesson after 25 years it comes again prophecy comes in the name of jesus let restoration happen and by the mercy of god the time is reversed it comes again the same lack of preparation keeps bringing people down are you seeing why it takes more than receive it to walk in this realm you would thank me in the future for what i'm teaching you i'm teaching you the way to a superior life so that you stop blaming your parents and say if my father only accepted this job stupid man would have been out of this thing uh -uh, leave your father alone god is bringing you to a point i don't care what degree you graduated with i don't care there is a problem listen if you solve a millionaire's problem you have access to his millions it's as simple as that i'll never be a failure in this life never so every time i spend in prayer i'm sharpening my giftings for that day a day will come when that season comes God will send a great man who can sow a seed of 100 million naira to Koinonia. The person will be dying of tuberculosis or something. It's like that. That's how it works. 
there is always something you can exchange for and God will make it in such a way that on the day he's coming somebody will be bringing koinonia messages that one is God's part of the equation while that is happening I'm praying in the secret place Shekata baba baba. Rakata bada. greater wisdom oh God you can sleep in the night and not know that that is the last time you will sleep in that realm Hi. if Joseph knew if Joseph knew, all the people in the prison would have cleaned his shoe and said, Oga, okay, it is within your bail me. Imagine the guy that bought Joseph. When he was shaving Joseph, little did he know. He would have earned himself a position forever. Imagine those who were with the pre in the prison with Obas and John. The night he would come out. If they had known that he would just come out never to return, they would have said, Oga, okay, sir, let's pray. Father, bless this man. So that at least he will remember them. Beware of people that you keep mocking and say you are not this. You can't speak English very well. You can't do this and that and that. Beware, let me tell you. You know why? Because if you are not, if you don't take time. Please look at me. Let's just focus. God is just doing his thing. If, if, you, are, if you don't pay attention, can I tell you the truth? A day will come. You will find out that the same person you saw today. You looked at her, said, Mary, what is there? You will open an office that you feel from for two weeks. There are people today who are angry with me. They are angry with me because there were times when we could access one another. And at those times, they could say a lot of things. Call me when they wanted. But I was doing something they were not doing. We were all laughing and joking. And today, because of the difficulty in reaching me, they pick offense. It's not my fault. I refuse to remain at that level. I intend to grow. Be nice to people today. Let me tell you, brothers and sisters, for those of you who look at people in Koinonia, and when we say greet one another, you just turn. You don't know who you are turning. Time and chance. He may come from a poor family. He may have one ton sandals. But let me tell you, time, the word you are hearing is sharpening you for that time. A day will come. There is something God has put in you. This is the justice of God. This is why every man can be great. Time and chance happens to them all. The day it happened to our parents, they were not prepared. They were there talking about others, criticizing others and the clock passed. And it went to one drunkard who just got born again and saw the time, took advantage of it. And they said, ah, is this not the boy on campus that was drinking? He was drinking, but he did something with his opportunity. Now he's a billionaire. He's a pastor. He's advancing the kingdom. Let me tell you something that happened. In 2008, I believe, I was in Accra for a retreat and something happened. Hallelujah. No, I think 2007 or so. I was in Accra for a retreat praying and seeking the face of God for the things that he was going to do. And while I was praying, my money had finished. I had nothing, not even to eat. Not even to pay for the hotel where I was having the retreat for that night. I finished praying. I was reading a book within the gates. It's a divine revelation book. When I read it, the spirit of God just told me stroll around. And I came out. I started strolling. I was walking like a fool. Time and chance. I want to share with you testimonies now. The Holy Ghost just said, just keep walking. I was walking like a fool. I didn't know where I was going. Up to 25 minutes, I was just walking. The next thing I saw a signboard welcome to Accra city campus and the holy ghost said enter immediately i entered the first person i'll meet is the src president and the guy listen the guy looked at me and the moment he looked at me he said how are you sir when he shook me he just took his hand he said jesus he said can you come to my office miracle number one listen listen true story i want to tell you i know what i'm saying i'm not just making noise when this guy brought me to the office we didn't speak more than five minutes. He started shaking. Time and chance. And they ordered a meal. I first ate the meal. And then we attended their fellowship. I sat down quietly. After they attended, they have just like the campus has Friday fellowship. When they finished, I went to his office. Watch this. The moment 
I started talking. I started talking at about 2 4. We rounded up that meeting past 9. When we started talking, the university esco started coming to the office one by one. They would come. This one would fall under the anointing and remain there. It was in that place I inaugurated the prayer group that prayed for the campus in Accra. In that Accra city campus. On that day, I'm still in touch with that gentleman. Again, his life changed. There was, they have their prophets like their, maybe what you would call an FCS president. Yes, after the, the, the president would finish, he invited me again to Accra and I went to minister in a program. And it was a powerful and explosive program. I was even on radio. The radio and they did an interview. I think that was when we traveled with Bala, Alex and a team of other people. Listen, that's not the whole story. When I finished that night, the people came together past nine. They raised an offering of maybe equivalent in Naira now of maybe 30,000. And they gave me. I didn't even know how to find my way back. They directed me. I found my way. Paid for that night. And I ate a very good meal. I said it works. I remember in the room I was screaming. I said come on. Not it has equal value in any land. You don't need to know nobody. All this Godfather nonsense. Let me tell you. Get out of it right now. If God is on your side. There is nothing. Nothing you cannot get. Listen. The night I was supposed to leave, those guys started crying because they would come and visit me in my hotel. It was within three or four days, their lives changed. They said, what sort of person? I taught them on the kingdom. It was an unusual open heavens. So the last day they invited me again, I prayed with them, strengthened all the people, you know, blessed them. They had impartations and all of that. And they raised me money again. An equivalent of maybe say 50,000. And then I returned back. Who would have helped me? I don't have any uncle. But the gift of a man. The time and chance is God's own equation. Leave it for him. God is speaking to someone tonight. You have been crying and say Lord when will it come? God said forget about the issue of when. Are you prepared? Are you seeing that God delaying seasons is an act of his love? That thing you have been calling delay. You are not prepared. If it had come before this message, you would have blown it only for it to come back 10 years. You open a shop, nobody's coming. God is saying, uh -uh, I don't want you to miss. Be careful what you call delay. Some things may be the hand of God. Your job, you didn't get the job. God said, I, I don't want you to struggle. There is something you can know. You go for a job in four months, you have become one of the executives. It does not take time if you can solve the problem. You will rise to the top. All the days of my appointed time, I will wait. But while I wait, I will sharpen the knife. I will pray in tongues. While I wait, I will keep studying the word. I know I'm going to stand before kings. I must have content to give them. I won't talk like I'm talking before weak men. I will stand before presidents. A day will come. It will be a privilege to air koinonia. A day will come. We will not just have one or two TV stations. There will be many. One billionaire can sponsor it for years. But while that time comes, we will pray. We will fast. We will travel. Let them call you a fool because there is no car. What is car? See, a man came to Mike Murdoch because of something that he did. He was begging Mike Murdoch to buy a car for him. Mike Murdoch said, I don't need it. He said, I, I entered a covenant with God that every year till you die, I will be buying you the latest Benz car. One day I was passing around Abuja and I saw all the mighty houses they were building around my Tama. And the Holy Ghost told me, do you know how many of your houses are here? No, I'm serious. God told me, he said, you will only build in life just for the formality, the gift of a man. The owner of that building will need me one day. Darkness is a mystery that announces light. The world will be too dark. One day, they will need the anointing. They will need it. I'm telling you, many of you have not been respecting what you carry. I know what I carry. 
I know what I carry is an anointing of the spirit. The nations can never, 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 they can never deny the effect. They may not like me, but there is an anointing. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time, I'm fasting, I may be lean, I may so carry, but there is an anointing. My father could not enter, but there is an anointing. There is wisdom, there is the gift of God. And I will increase your greatness and comfort you on every side. There is a price to pay. I don't blame anybody. Left now is to sharpen my ability. Higher. I may not speak the kind of English you want, but when I say it, an anointing will leave. You can deny my English, but you cannot deny the anointing. There is something. See, this is what I'm training you to become. There is a sharpening. You may not see it now. The world will need you. You will collect a salary of maybe 100,000. But your boss will sow a seed of 5 million to get out of trouble. Your ability, listen, we are soon going to pray. Your ability to maximize the moment opens you up to un told realms of greatness look at me Aaron is here let me share with you his testimony permit me Aaron a bit for years many of you know how skilled Aaron is for years the kind of job he was trusting God for would not come I know times when things would get a bit painful for him and we kept encouraging he will be listening to the word of God but time and chance a season just came brothers and sisters supernaturally he got a job two he got connected with the deputy governor of kaduna state within how many months aaron that they, within two months they moved him to go and head a unit in just now he heads a unit in just and we're only counting see i think there's one of our ladies here two of our ladies that i know the moment they graduated they've not even served they just call them to get jobs you may not value what you are receiving don't let anybody fool you and make you think you are wasting your time a day will come the price you are paying now is what your colleagues will be paying in the future you are already paying it now you may look like a fool some of you as you are going back home now they will insult you and say we are not seeing the fruit it does not yet appear but time and chance will reveal that i'm not praying in tongues for nothing hallelujah this year let me give you the last story and then we'll pray this year i was in ibadan we, we all went to ibadan and when we went they lodged us in one of the best hotels there and it was yerima victor and um, sam they sent me a text in the afternoon they said we're swimming and we're enjoying and then i looked through my window they were playing table tennis they were swimming you know they were enjoying themselves all snapping and enjoying and i looked and then i remember the story that same hotel listen in 2007 i went to that same hotel for something but i could not pay for any room because it was very expensive listen to me i still had the anointing but time and season had not come i went there i still saw the arrangement i sat down there there's the reception there brothers and sisters i was looking for a place around that vicinity where they were doing night vigil it was a friday night so i will attend the night vigil because i had no money if i touch anything i will not have my transport back are you hearing what i'm saying that same hotel somebody would have looked at me and said oh what failure Hiya. mistake big mistake you don't need to respond to those who think you are failures because you went to the board and you saw five carryovers and the devil says see tell him no you see just keep watching time 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 
Yes, you may have an extra year. Write it and move. And thank God because in that extra year, you are still moving ahead. See, if a plane is moving forward, even if you go back to the rest room, you are still moving forward. Because the plane carrying you is moving forward. I stayed that night till morning. No bathing, no nothing. And a few years later, there is a protocol of people together with the wife of the police commissioner of the state. We came and we sat with this woman. We are still going back, I think some, sometime towards the year. We are still going back to our place again. This woman was astonished. The things that God did in, in Ibadan was amazing. The woman followed us to our hotel room and we kept talking till almost, I think, to 12 or past 12. And she brought, she said she must show her husband. Her husband is one of the top police people. Praise God. And she, they recorded everything, me prophesying and praying for her. And she said she must meet her husband. And she just brought out a check, I think a check of 30,000 or something. She said, sorry, oh man of God, this is small. But can you take this? I said, oh Lord, time and chance. It's not like I prayed more. I just kept doing what I was doing. It, when, when your season comes, the same thing you did that did not produce result will now produce amazing results. There are miracles that happen in Koinonia here that if we were on air, people will already start traveling. But time and chance. Don't worry, a day will come. Stop trying to announce yourself. There are many people on air getting millions of naira. They don't have up to half of Sam's anointing. Continue what you are doing. Time and chance. A day will come. God will arrange your destiny helpers in front. Then they will give you 10 minutes to lead prayers. That's the day God will announce you. In 10 minutes, what the spirit of God will do, you will have more than 20 invitations. Come for our conference. Come for this. You are reading business books. You are preparing yourself. It looks like you are a fool. There is nothing working. No office. Only knowledge. People even call you big head. Don't worry. A day will come. Unto none of the widows. Was, was, um, was Elijah. How did he put it now? Was the prophet sent. Except that widow of Zarephath. But the question God is asking you tonight before we pray. When the season comes, when the season comes, are you sharpened enough to make that your last season in that realm? Will you make the words of your critics become a self-fulfilling prophecy? Or will you contend? They may be seeing the brother and sister praying and they say, hey, you people know what you are doing. Don't worry. You don't need to answer anybody. Just keep praying. seasons a day came we're doing this same thing but it was at the back of chapel no facebook to capture the picture and show the world that there is the hand of god upon these people but a day will come so i stopped focusing about cars nonsense house no leave all those things from today i'm teaching you when you sit with friends and they say oh boy where now? Where will our level change? Just know that they are wasting your time. Time and chance. It never announces to you that the day is coming. You will just sleep in the prison one night. And by the second night, you are in a palace you cannot account for. What brought me here? Oh, I believe it for somebody. I believe it for somebody. Let me bring a word for somebody you may be going through certain things you are killing the lion in the secret nobody knows you are killing the bear nobody knows a day will come god will put you in front of goliath and it will be in the presence of all israel on that day saul will know that there is a david some of you have anointings today that if it's to be revealed the world will run away don't look for premature manifestation let me tell you service is the best way to train yourself and sharpen yourself you see all these things people say i won't play keyboard till they pay me you are being foolish you can serve now
and they give you prayers and you make blunders at least the mistake was made in jerusalem before you now get to judea and samaria and make blunders there make the mistake here sing and go off key here we will laugh at you alone and we'll tap your back there are mistakes that great men don't make in the open no make it here make it here sharpen that knife who is god speaking to tonight because i sense in my spirit that we are at the edge i cannot tell you trust me i'm not speaking nonsense i know it in my spirit i've been telling you this for days i have been fasting and preparing for these seasons i have i have picked the signal that believers in this side of god's kingdom there is a dimension of there is a shofar that will blow in this season and let me tell you warriors will arise this i call it the zaria experience we will reproduce this thing in this country many people do not know what god is doing in this side of the kingdom you just finish your school wear your convocation gown or sit back a day will come god will say your season in zaria is over it's time to move like arrows like arrows in a man's quiver he will send you you will wreak havoc across the seven mountains that day will come pay the price now forget the name you don't need to be called an apostle or pastor or prophet is irrelevant settle down hallelujah that's why see listen let me tell you one secret about my life i shared it with the school of ministry students you never see me in broad daylight just roaming around foolishly no if you see me around there was something to do you never that you are walking on the street you just see me jumping around and say yeah, corn or maize which one is hot no i'm preparing for such an extraordinary life i want my life to match the visions that i've seen in the spirit call me apostle thank god for the healings i won't be deceived i want to carry the word of the lord with such a razor sharp accuracy so i will stay in the presence i will fast i will pray let me be lean today no problem it doesn't kill it doesn't kill prayer doesn't kill don't be a fool the suffering of the future is what kills the price today doesn't kill there's no job instead of praying and lamenting be preparing and say i know a job will come the day they do that interview they won't just give a job they will promote me at once because they will say where have you been rise up on your feet my spirit is fired up please jump up on your feet i like you to begin to blast in tongues instrumentalists come up everybody come on from the depth of your spirit do it for your future time and chance happens to you a day will come your season of appearing your season of appearing don't be tired don't be tired man of god don't be tired woman of god don't be tired prophet of god don't be tired apostle of god don't be tired keep pressing sharpen the anointing sharpen the skill sharpen the gift
Kota. My season of appearing is coming. They may victimize me today. But time and chance. Time and chance. Time and chance. Hallelujah. 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 The next prayer point. I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, I receive the capacity to build. Listen. If you can't just pair yourselves into two, find a brother or sister that is ready to pray and say, Lord, in the name of Jesus. I receive grace to build to sharpen that ability as I wait for that day. Come on, pray, Koinonia. The day will come. The day will come. Reporto prekete kete bosha, embraka ta ba ba ba, roboto boko so sekete, lekete, reposko prekete, and your new capacity, pay the price now. Boko toko so sekete, rekete kete boko to prekete ba 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 Prepare for the seasons. Prepare for the opportunities. They will come. They will come. They will come. They will come. Prepare for it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And thou will increase my grace and comfort me on every side. Listen. Listen. The third prayer point. You're going to attack every spirit, listen, of premature manifestation and distraction. Many of us want to be known. It's not fair. I'm anointed. Give me prayers to pray. I'm anointed. Put me on the stage. Nonsense. Stephen remained here serving tables. But the anointing was too much for tables. You are going to pray. Listen. There are many of us. You cannot delay gratification. You want to buy the shoe now. You want to buy everything now. You see people standing. And you say I must buy this kind of shoe. I must buy this kind of watch. Oh, glory. The word is working. You better keep quiet and pray. Prepare for the season. Read the books. Read books on fatherhood. Read books on leadership. Read books on ministry. Sharpen yourself. When you are tired and it's 12 o'clock or 1 o'clock time to pray. When you are tired, remember your destiny drag yourself up i'm tired it's true that i'm tired but for the sake of my destiny 
I do it to correct the errors of the fathers. I do it to correct the limitations of my family. Hallelujah. 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 Listen. Anytime you see a nice jeep, go and get a book and read. That's how to that's how to claim it. After you speak and say in the name of Jesus, but prepare, knowing that there is something you can have that will bring it to you. I'm walking in power, I'm walking in miracles, I live a life of favor. I know I'm walking in power. I live a life of favor. Very important. You must know who you are. We teach in our school of ministry, and 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 there is a course where we teach the students who you are. You know and. I teach them in that course that there is something called identity crisis let's borrow two minutes of their lecture there is something called identity crisis you know what identity crisis is identity crisis is the resultant effect of not comprehending your worth the moment you do not know who you are the devil and men and this bedeviled wall will paint a picture that you are not there are many people today who are under needless pressure trying to be who and what they are not. It's not in the blueprint of their destiny. Because I taught you here, remember, I don't know what discussion we're having when I taught you that psychologically speaking, there are certain indices that measure fulfillment. Is that true? Yes. One of it is security. Another is variety. One of it is growth. Another is love and acceptance. There is a craving in the human nature for love and acceptance. And chances are that if you have not stayed with the word, are we together now? Yes. Like Bishop David Oedipo will say, to find out your picture from scripture, to be able to find out this is what God has said concerning me. This is who I am based on what scripture said not based on what your mind has said not based on what your background has said was it not paul that said there is as it were many voices and that none of them is without effect your background has a voice remember who you are failures all through and you hear that voice then unfortunately and i know and i pray that it's changing thank god for christian schools but if you are not fortunate to go to a school that calls upon the name of the Lord, now you hear another voice added to that negativity by, by teachers and all of that. They look at you and say, you are dull, you are almost demonic, I don't know how you got here, I don't even know where you are going. And I can tell you because you respect them, you will believe it. And then, with every sense of respect and apology, parents have a major role in in destroying the self-worth of children by the time you begin to minister words curses and words that are not consistent with scripture by the time an average child is 10 12 years subliminally he has already received all kinds of suggestions about who he is so now that they think they are weak the devil will now begin to market templates that can make you belong that's why people join occultic societies. That's why people join all kinds of things. They say they want to belong. When Satan came to Jesus, the first test was the test of identity. The first test, the very first test was a test of identity. If you are truly the son of God, turn these stones to bread. Jesus said, I don't need to prove to you. The voice already spoke that I am his beloved son man shall not live by bread alone but every word you had the word when he announced it everything under heaven had it including you don't ask me that question you already know i'm the son of god so when life and friends and society 
sadly and the sociological context of our world now forces you to do things and be things to show you are great you can tell them no 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 i'm a civilized person but i have limits i know who i am don't just tell me to dress the way you want to show i am civil to talk the way you want to live the way you want no within the boundary of of a civilized world i will conform to that which is an advantage but i know who i am based on scripture i am the beloved of god behold what manner of love the father has bestowed upon us in that we are called the sons of god there are many names that the bible calls us light salt ambassadors kings priests are we learning now so you discover god you discover yourself the next thing that you discover under that stage of discovery is you discover your abilities your giftings and your abilities please pay attention please pay attention there is always a rod in your hand oh dear moses that is the rod you will use to walk signs and wonders it is not only god you discover it is not only yourself you discover there is something god has given you that is the rod you are going to use moses be careful to not throw that rod one day you will need it to pass the red sea one day to become the symbol of your leadership can i tell you this everyone here seated looking at me following online and will be following by way of rebroadcast or whatever platform it comes through can i tell you sincerely there is something god has put within you that the world is desperately waiting for to receive this is not just some motivational talk this is truth based on scripture nobody came here empty everybody came here as an expression of the fullness of the life and the power of jesus if you are joseph we need your leadership and your ability to interpret dreams if you are deborah we need your strength and your dexterity in war if you are moses we need your passion to be able to communicate with god and prophetically drive the people out of captivity everybody in scripture that was used of god there were things god gave them david could sing he used that grace to write the psalms today that has brought all kinds of deliverance david was a warrior and he used to fight valiantly in his lifetime david had leadership everything david had eventually was featured in the palace what do you have in your hand that was what the lord told moses what do you have in your house second kings chapter 5 second kings chapter 4 please 4 i meant to say the bible says there was a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophet second kings 4 from verse 1 she said unto elisha my servant thy husband is dead and thou knowest that thy servant did fear the lord and the creditor aha uh -huh, the creditor is come to take him to take unto him my two sons to be born men next verse please and elisha said unto her what shall i do for thee and he asked a question he says tell me what hast thou in your house hear the woman's reply this is the reply of many of us when destiny calls on you what do you have in this house of earthen vessel here's what we say nothing thine handmaid had not anything in the house except a pot of oil i have nothing except an ability to sing i have nothing except great charisma and leadership prowess i have nothing except passion and hunger for god i have nothing except the ability to be trusted be careful what you call nothing be careful what you call nothing i have nothing except some degree of business acumen i have nothing except that when i sleep whatever i see in my dream truly happens i have nothing except the dream that i have that i saw myself on a crusade ground while i was sleeping on a mat in a hut i saw myself speaking before nations that's all that i have he says what do you have 
you must discover what you have can i tell you this every great man that you admire today whether in the kingdom or in the secular whether in ministry in politics in business they were men and women who among other factors got to a point in their lives where they discovered that there is something valuable that god has given me hear me your sense of self-worth among other factors is tied to the perception of the value you have about yourself we live respectfully speaking in a very fake world today where everybody tries to do this and leave this if you are not wearing this oh how how much is your shoe two thousand naira and people laugh at two thousand naira did you make it yourself and people laugh and make you feel stupid and you stand there wondering what to do and then you go out of your way to live a fake life you've heard me say don't fake what can be real your self-worth is never about any exterior thing around you thank god for the beauty the glamour the grace that is wonderful but if you put your trust in anything outside you you are insecure can i tell you most of the things that we face in our world today especially as it makes for interpersonal relationships and all of that they are a derivative of this secret frustration psychologists have said it and i've taught you again that you look at life from the lens of the perception of your value if you feel you are not valuable you will interpret life from the lens of that frustration if you are a happy man the world is a happy place for you if you are a sad person the world is a sad place for you if you are a godly person in the midst of all the decadence that goes on you can see god you can see what he's doing if you are someone who is a failure you would look at life from the lens of your experience what sees thou is a is a report card is god speaking to us tonight so the first stage when you are preparing for greatness is discovery discovery of god as the almighty the beginning and the end the one who holds your life and your destiny and then number two discovery of yourself so that you become healed once and for all from the scar that society will try to bring as a result of the injury that they will give you for not trying to conform to certain patterns that society depicts to measure greatness so if you do not find 10 cars in my house for instance if you do not find a great mansion for instance if you do not find me wearing all the designers that should be nothing is wrong with these things in themselves if you don't see me speaking in a certain way if you don't see me snapping in front of an expensive vehicle society says you are failure and many of us have been deceived to believe it so we live our lives in secret and open frustrations trying to be what god already said you are are we blessed and then the discovery of your potentials i first heard this from the lips of my greatly revered mentor in life and in death dr miles monroe when i read his book on discovering your potentials when he said here's what he said that the wealthiest place on earth is not the gold mines in sub-saharan africa around it's not it's not the oil mines in nigeria and iraq and all of that he said the most expensive the wealthiest place on earth he called it the symmetry why because that is where books died that were not written that's where dreams died that did not come to pass and he said little did he know that he would not live so long he said his assignment was not just longevity alone his focus was efficiency that jesus lived for 33 and a half years and his impact till eternity will continue to be felt and he gave his all and truly he died empty one of the last books he wrote before he went to be with the lord is called passing it on the principle of transgenerational relevance and legacy a man that cheated death indeed are we blessed 
you must find what it is that you have in your hands can i tell you this when the woman was saying nothing except a pot of oil the pot was hearing her and the oil was hearing her and here's what the oil was saying you call me nothing the same way your writing ability is saying do you know you can write about revivals is it not robert Lerden that wrote one book god's generals that set fire today only god knows how many ministries have come from that book all kinds of books gifts Billy Graham discovered that he had the ability to love the Lord and to communicate effectively. And he deployed that gift in his evangelical operation and today arguably one of the greatest evangelists in modern history who has lived. What do you have in your hand? What do you have in your house? It is time to go back and stay with the Holy Spirit and take intentional inventory of everything that constitutes an advantage in your life because everything God gave you that constitutes an advantage will be used for your destiny. Can I tell you this? Satan will usually flash to your face all the negative things around your life. Many of us do not see anything glorious about ourselves you are poor he will make sure you see that one you don't speak well he will make sure you see that one you spend 15 years in the village he will drum it to your ears but the wonderful things god has made out of your life he will not allow you see in the name of jesus may you see clearly can i tell you this our fathers of faith in this nation fathers of faith across africa every one of them got to a point where they had to deploy that gift that god gave them to be able to serve the purposes of god today if you do not find that rod in your hand you will be ashamed when you stand before pharaoh because there will be nothing that would demonstrate the glory of god it was the rod god gave moses that was used to prove the almightiness of god if you neglect your gift there will be nothing in your life to prove indeed that god is mighty over you you must obtain grace from god seated here looking at me following in all the overflows outside from whatever nation whatever tv station there are people listening to me you have dreams god has planted things in your life can i tell you this when it looks like certain individuals are superstars the difference between a superstar and whatever is this discovery nobody is intrinsically exceptional above any other person no everybody born of a woman was once a baby in the hand of that woman even if you were born royalty you were still a baby jesus as the son of god did not automatically become savior even though he was the word he had to go through this system of discovery at age 12 the bible tells us that he was at the temple what do you think he was doing at the temple he was learning everybody said discovery pay attention to this teaching because many of us are superstitiously hoping that destiny will just happen we are superstitiously hoping that greatness will just happen one day go better we say in this side of god's kingdom and it is so wrong provided you don't do anything until that one day more than admiring great people more than commending people who have done exploits in the kingdom whether in music whether in career in politics don't just sit down and clap for people use their lives as an inspiration that this man was once a baby in the hand of a woman what is the difference between this man and me not in a competitive way not in a way that communicates jealousy but in a way that challenges you greatness is simply the world acknowledging you for serving them effectively with your gift the feedback you receive from your world and your generation for effectively serving them with your gift is what we call greatness it appears as honor it has appears as priority living it appears as whatever it is but the truth is that when you use this that god has given you you discover it you have begun your journey to greatness 
let me do a quick recap and we move forward that there are two main phases when it has to do with manifesting greatness in the kingdom the first um, season is called the season of preparation and I'm now defining the activities that happen under that season that that season of preparation is broken into three phases phase one is discovery you discover God you discover you you discover what he has given you say amen, amen. the second thing that you do in the second phase under preparation is called development the phase of development now that you have discovered God now that you have discovered you now that you have discovered what God has given you look up please Miles Monroe calls it and the dictionary defines it as potential do you know what potential is potential is what a thing can become but it's not potential potential means untapped um, resources whether human whether material whether mental when you talk of a potential or you talk of a thing in its potential form it means that there is value that can be derived from it but not at that state for instance we celebrate and we thank God for the gift of crude oil in this country but if you happen to go and watch them mine oil when oil actually comes out and you see it you will run away from that place because it's a dark slippery paste of smelly substance and yet that is what has powered the economy of many nations that oil that comes out is not the one your car is looking for that's not the one you will queue to pay for discovery is good but can i tell you this there are many people with dreams with notebooks full of dreams the greatest way to bring your dream to pass is to wake up from that dream if you wake up from that dream then you are ready to make that dream come to pass but for as long as it remains a dream it remains there forever everybody who turned their dreams to reality did that by first waking up please look at me you must obtain grace from God to refine two aspects of your life number one you must refine your gifts number two in fact in order of priority when it has to do with development you must refine your mind then you must refine your gift if you refine your gift alone you will still be frustrated there are two aspects that must be refined when it has to do with development number one is your mind number two your potential the mind is a very important component as far as excelling and greatness is concerned in this kingdom why because you see the bible tells us that um how does it put it now it says let this mind be in you which was also in christ jesus there was a mindset and a belief system philippians 2 5 that jesus had that made him great he didn't just say let this power be in you it's not only the power that was in Jesus that you need you also need the mind that was in Jesus without the mind that was in Jesus the power that was on him will be useless in your life you need both his mind and his power everybody say his mind many people want the power that was in Jesus but you do not want his belief systems your belief system is a summation of your paradigms your viewpoints your perspectives can I tell you we are made or destroyed by our belief systems I have taught it here there's no need going to, you know to share it again but maybe just for one or two minutes let me tell you this that our mindsets are formed largely from number one culture number two our past experiences is that true number three our failures number four our association number five our levels of exposure all of these are factors that become the shapers of our belief systems 
the average person in nigeria and africa by the time you are age 10 by the time you are a teenager you would have been exposed to too many activities that would have respectfully speaking dehumanized and demean your perception of yourself therefore the bible says romans chapter 12 and verse 1 and 2 i beseech thee brethren by the message of god that ye present your bodies it says a living sacrifice holy acceptable unto god he calls it your reasonable act of worship verse 2 says be not conformed to this world but be ye transformed say transform what does it mean to transform to evolve into superior versions of yourself that's what it means to be transformed to be transformed means to evolve into superior versions of yourself like a fly evolves from egg lava pupa and then adults you must obtain grace from god to evolve you've heard me teach it that your destiny is looking for you but not this current version of you the version of you that your destiny is looking for you are yet to become it the most important thing about success and greatness is not the achievements is what you become or have to become to obtain it what you have to become to be great is greater than the greatness itself are we blessed don't forget this the most important component as far as your growing into greatness is concerned is not the greatness itself and the possibilities that surround that realm is the person you are forced to become until you attain that greatness becoming is greater than doing you really become successful more from becoming than doing but the people that do know their god knowledge they shall be strong becoming then they shall do exploits it is knowledge transformation and then action not knowledge and action knowledge transformation is the reason why we do right things and get wrong results because you only do right things when you have become everybody say development i'm challenging everyone under the sound of my voice therefore that we have to obtain grace from god if we are truly serious about manifesting our kingdom destinies and rising unto greatness we must obtain grace from god having discovered our giftings we must begin an intentional a radical and non-emotional non-emotional project of transformation when you contend for transformation emotionally you will not go far when you feel sleepy when you are awake when you feel angry when you feel hungry no you must enter a covenant with yourself that come rain and come sunshine every 24 hour that god gives me will a major part of it will be invested in my transformation how are you transformed the bible tells you number one through the renewing of your mind how do you renew your mind by supplying into your mental space superior information superior word-based information and then repeating them until they superimpose the negative thoughts that have surrounded your mind hearing the truth once is not enough you must hear it again and again until it gains dominance over your mind then the bible now says out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks you can declare in prayer and then all of these other things and then the bible also says for as he thinketh in his heart or mind he says so is he he didn't say so he will become you already are what you are thinking mental transformation is a miracle believers especially people who are largely spiritual and passionate about god because of that drive to encounter the holy spirit the power the anointing of the holy spirit many times we who god has trusted with grace for the miraculous for signs and wonders we have um we have fallen prey as far as emphasizing the importance of being mentally transformed because we feel what is the need for having an enlightened mind after all i have anointing after all i can pray after all i'm spiritual it takes more than that as far as your excelling is concerned jesus did not just wait until he was 30. even before we see him praying we saw him in the temple learning when satan came to him he didn't say i assume he said it is written 
are we together you must obtain grace from God to sit down dear Nigerians especially the young population let's sit down and learn this this passion to run around and have premature manifestation sit down sit down we must obtain grace from God but apostle I went to school you know it's not enough you must sit down there are three levels of education there is unlearning there is relearning there is learning there are things you have to unlearn there are things you have to learn as new there are things you have to relearn as emphasis if these three levels is not happening to you you are not really educated education is not just an awareness of a body of information no you must unlearn deconstruct many belief systems that are wrong you must learn then you must relearn it is unlearning learning and relearning that is education i will say it again if you want proper enlightenment not just spiritual enlightenment secular enlightenment you must unlearn you must learn you must relearn develop your mind ask any ceo the difference between an exceptional ceo a fulfilled politician a technocrat an intelligent person one who is doing much for the kingdom a great man of god our fathers of faith are all over this nation we love them we honor them we admire them can i tell you something one consistent thread that runs across all the fathers of faith in this nation is that they are exceptionally brilliant people mention one dull one and you'll be the first mentioning it and the only one mentioning it there is no dull father of faith that i know who is making global impact because ministry is more than preaching preaching only accounts for at least 30 percent of ministry there is administration there is leadership there is diplomacy there are all kinds of factors involved in ministry for them to win this much it is the holy spirit in partnership with an enlightened mind we have this idea that god just landed on them and commissioned them find out their labor find out the things they do the little that we are doing for God here, we can feel the heat and the disadvantage of not being enlightened. Please, I encourage you, from families to institutions, religious and secular institutions, business and all of that, we must settle down to contend for knowledge. Settle down to contend for knowledge. Challenge yourself to be enlightened. And don't let the devil make you think that what I'm sharing tonight is not important. It is absolutely important. The destinies of people are tied to your rising and your greatness. It is selfish to refuse to be great because more than yourself, there are people who will eat from the fruit of your greatness. Are we together? So discovery and then refining. When you begin to refine your mind and refine your gifts, it ushers you into the next phase of your season of preparation called the season of testing write it down the season of testing oh dear I wish I had time the season of testing can I tell you this if it is God you are doing business with before he commits to you destinies before he commits to you anointings and graces you must be tested genesis 22 please from verse 1 we're still looking at the life of abraham and it came to pass after these things remember genesis 12 abraham has an encounter with god he begins his journey 10 chapters later we see him stepping into the next phase it came to pass after these things that God did what tempt some verses will say test Abraham what was the test Abraham he said behold I am here next verse please he said take now thy son thy only son Isaac whom thou lovest take note of lo only and lovest only son whom thou lovest get thee into a land of moriah and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which i will tell you verse 3 
guess what the bible says and abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass and took two of his young men with him and isaac his son and clave the wood for the bond offering and rose up and went on to the place which god had told him we'll continue later on but look look at this look at this god tells abraham i want to make you a father of nations i will bless them that bless you cause him that causes you in this shall all the families be blessed in other words i'm going to make you the landlord of the earth he willed the earth to abraham are we together now and then abraham did not know that as he kept obeying god transiting he would get to a point where god will now say now we are getting to the season where prophecy and destiny is about to be activated but not without a test the bible does not leave us in the dark as to the fact that everything that was happening was a test but abraham did not know it was a test can i tell you this this final phase of your preparation season is the hardest phase for most people ask any great man they will tell you the season of test is a season where you have to obtain grace from god the season of test will test you across three things number one it will test you across trust and integrity you will be tested you will be tested you will be tested your capacity to be a person of integrity will be tested beyond measure number two the second test is the test of patience the test of patience i can tell you this if it is God who is lifting you, he will stretch you from pillar to post. Man of God, let me tell you what he will do to you. As a great man on fire, God loving you, your pastor just looks at you and says, you are going to be the person opening the gate at the church. You look at the potential of your anointing compared to the miracle that just happened before you came and say pastor sorry i hope you know that two among these 10 testimonies came directly from me and yet god says go and do it can i tell you this the test of greatness achieves many things among them it must humble you to your lowest otherwise it's not god lifting you some of these insulting derogatory experiences we go through the man of god may not know god is using him to test you nobody knows that it's a test is it's only god it's not like men know if a man tries to test you he's not god it is at the end looking from hindsight you will know that it was not about isaac it was not about abraham it was about god saying for me to commit this kind to you this is where many people fail they fail the test can i tell you this the test of destiny will insult your pedigree the test of destiny will turn you sometimes you look at yourself and say i'm not a fool be careful the moment it starts looking like god is just allowing things to fall your hand like we call it be careful there are people today who would have become mighty men and women of god if they had submitted themselves to cleaning the chair they say no way I can't be carrying this heavy prophetic grace especially when you are serving and your superiors may not seem to be as gifted as you maybe someone is in that face right now listen carefully I've trained the leaders in this ministry to understand that anything at all God gives you do it with all your heart you do not know what season you are stepping into are we together go and ask many great men do you know what stephen was doing before he became that mighty man stephen was part of those who were serving tables there are many great men today who started by scrubbing the floors of their ceos and while they were scrubbing the floors they will hear discussions happening and they were cleaning all kinds of things while their contemporaries were saying i'm too big they were saying no 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 i love the lord father it's a privilege for me to do what i'm doing the moment you are too big to be tested you are also too big to be great or too small to be great i have told god and i told god this right from before he lifted me no matter what it is that i have to do 
is in the name of the Lord and I'm serving you, I will do it with all my heart. I stand before the God of heaven and I'm telling you now, if the Lord asks me to drop this leadership and leave everything and go back to be an usher, even in Koinonia here, I stand by the God of heaven, I will do it. I know you think I'm not all right, but I will do it. It's better to be wrong with God. Let me tell you how you know that the door of greatness is already closing in you. The moment what you were doing before, you now become too big to do it. Check yourself. Go for a retreat quickly. Some of us as it is today, if you hold a broom, you will be sick. May God forgive you. In the name of Jesus Christ, because you see, can I be honest with you? One of the ways to walk in humility is that occasionally in your life, disengage yourself with certain privileges, even if it's for a day, and you go back to the things you used to do. They will administer a measure of humility to keep you balanced. Because you see, as you rise, there will be people to serve you, protocol. You see me coming in and you see all these, my people, everything. And some of you, this is what you are looking at. When you look at all these things, say, oh God, I must be like Joshua Selman, not his prayer life, not his word life. What you want is this one. And God says, you lie. I'm not, I'm not, you don't cheat me like that. You go back and start that school of the spirit the season of testing this is the season where it will look like God is not even answering your prayer I've taught you here as a man of God you can pray for somebody who will go for the crusades and be raising people from wheelchairs and they bring somebody who is suffering from constipation you will almost lay all your hands on the person and nothing happens and the person says i'm disappointed i was told so much about you uh, i i i thought and you say me and god says keep quiet tell him god bless you you say god bless you and he leaves and you feel stupid at a point you say god what is the name of all these things god will send you to go and preach somewhere as soon as you finish you'll be waiting thinking an honorarium is coming they will just carry maybe orange or banana hold it in a leather and say sir may the lord who called you honor you and bless you listen 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 and you are standing there and wondering okay a three days conference and god says accept it quickly and go he's winning you of the lost for things tests most of us miss these seasons because we have an idea that the moment you are gifted the next thing after being gifted is celebration you lie not in god's economy there will be a season of test this is where many people are bought destiny and are bought greatness they are too big to serve they are too big to pray they are too big to do whatever it is that they do Believe what I'm telling you. For many years in my life, I wanted to buy a car, but God prohibited me. This is true. And at a point I said, what is all this one now? A car that will help me is still this gospel thing. <laughs> the making of the great is painful. You are not the only one. Apostle, you don't know what is happening to me. You think so? How do you think everybody who got here, got here? It looks, you see, that season makes it painful and you think it's only you. This is why mentorship is powerful. Because when you see the people sitting at the table of greatness, like Kung Fu masters, they laugh at you. They say, just continue. Continue, you will get here. God can give you an assignment and say from today and for the next six months, four days out of every seven days you are fasting and from 12 o'clock till four you are praying and you say god for what i thought you said i'm a kingdom financier he says that's exactly the training of a kingdom financier god trains you as a kingdom financier like he's training a revivalist you will say god confirm it with speed you will have a dream someone will send you a text god will send another word so that you must do it with the exact word you must fast and you must pray and can i tell you this you will fast for two three months thinking there is a mighty crusade coming nothing will happen till you finish that fasting this is a test 
I'm explaining this to you because many of you are in this season now. I tell you, lift up your eyes, look beyond the pain. Your salvation is near. <laughs> Test. Apostle God is calling me to be a kingdom billionaire. Huh. He will not ask you to open an account. He will ask you to empty everything in your account. Only God knows how many times. That is the test. I know you will cast that voice. You say, no, God doesn't work like that. I am telling you, he works like that. There is a way that God works like that. There are demons, yes. But there is a way that God works. You must give everything. I've taught you that the price for all of God is all of you. God will wait until they pay you arrears for one year he will not wait until they give you a seed it's easy when they dash you money but god will wait until they pay you your arrears and you say take that isaac go to a mountain he can even say you should sow it to someone you don't like a ministry you don't like yours is to obey what do you think being a kingdom financier is just having an account with money and business ideas no sir what do you think being a man of god is just having a gift and a platform to speak uh -uh. for everyone you see who has tasted of greatness there is blood dripping on the altar believe me when i tell you this the only way to get to the throne is to pass through the cross i'm speaking to someone now because you are in a season of your life just help those under the anointing you are in a season of your life where it looks like nothing is happening this is applicable to all men apostle when i sleep i see a vision of a church and god is saying i will be a great man serving the purposes of god but i don't know what is happening why is it that nothing seems to be moving in my life fear not god is working with you let me tell you this if you never get to a point in your life where you don't even know the name of what you are doing it's not god who is training you you get to a point in your life where you say god, what are we doing just tell me the name of what we are doing are you getting what i'm saying now you can get a job of two hundred thousand and a job of eighty thousand and god can tell you go for the job of eighty thousand you say god do you know that i'm taking care of four people he says just go there now you see what i'm saying is not marketable because this is not what many people learn about kingdom greatness sometimes you just learn that oh i i wish i were lying i would have just told you i'm joking but i'm not what i'm saying is very serious and i tell you there are no exceptions to it swallow your pride tonight come to the school of the spirit don't you know in his hands are the keys to eternal life it's a little here a little there and then your day will dawn is at work in you changing everything in obedience to christ my brother my sister at this period of your life i want you to hold on the bible says do weeping endures there are times you cry but you still stay lord this fast i'm fasting as if i don't even know whether i'm touching my stomach or my back just fast it doesn't kill there are times that you sit down and you are praying and you are saying lord is it that i'm a pastor just encourage me by god says what you are is not your business you just know that you are a child of god and i'm making you become something if you want to claim the blessings of abraham be ready to carry isaac to that mountain we live in a generation that claims people's anointings and refuses their sacrifices anybody that you know who has become great today find out what they did there is always a season of preparation if you see anybody who breaks that rule run away from them they have nothing to offer you i have i tell you sincerely if you see any greatness that does not have a story and a track record of consistency with god there is not much to offer i've cried in my life oh you see me smiling all the time i'm only smiling before you ask god ah, the burden of this ministry the first time we organized crusade as a ministry then just starting 
we didn't even have money to pay the transport fare brothers and sisters this our generation must reduce this ungodly admiration that erodes the need for process please don't feel insulted i'm only stressing this because i want to pound it into your spirit behind every throne you see behind every throne you see there was a time i prayed for 72 hours non-stop my eyes did not know whether it was morning or night i don't say this to boast in the flesh but i am telling you ladies and gentlemen greatness does not just happen we live in a society that demeans the greatness and the value of people no I've had the honor and the privilege of knowing and being with a few of the fathers of faith in this nation. I tell you sometimes when you look at them, you can almost see in the spirit blood just dripping like rain on the ground. Their entire lives have become a drink offering. Before, even business people, before you admire people, you want to stretch your hands to the sick and they are healed. You want to tell someone stand up from a wheelchair and he stands you want to open a church or an assembly and god honors you with people please let me tell you this it is more than just claiming there is a school of the spirit there is a cup you must drink of and a baptism you must be baptized with they came to jesus and said can you grant that when you are exalted we will sit at your left and right he said the space is available but here is the condition can you drink of my cup and be baptized listen moses was a man who had been trained by the holy spirit do you know moses was a stammerer and yet look at the kind of heavy anointing he was carrying and he was quiet he didn't prophesy when the anointing on him came on 70 elders not children a part of it all none of them could stand and control it yet that's what one man was carrying and he was quiet training gives you stability it gives you stamina when you are in the school of the spirit especially say as a minister he will teach you to know when to speak he will teach you to know when to be quiet it's not everything that offends you he says, people are offending me in this church you've not gone through the school of the spirit when you go through he teaches you stability why do they do trainings for people before they promote them even in organizations am i right on that that before you promote people they call them and they have specialized trainings question what do they teach them there that they've not taught them before you are taking a director or something to become an agm and you sometimes they even go for retreats our politicians in this nation go for retreats what are they saying there the testing process is very difficult God will test everything he will be using you to do. One day you will pray and it will look like the prayer is not answered and God will watch you. After you have preached and said, there is nothing my God cannot do. You will feel as if his headache, whether it's from the back of your head or the front, you may not be able to explain. And like Paul, you will lay your hands. I'm sorry I'm not giving us a lot of scriptural references. I'm hurrying up. I besought him thrice that this thorn be taken away from me and he says my grace is sufficient for you for my my strength is made perfect in your weakness how do you help the poor when you never become like that there is a man of God that God gave an assignment for one or two years that he should leave all his money and everything and go and live somewhere in this nation and he went and lived you would think he does not have anything it was the sacrifice in the course of that journey he received a burden for that land such a powerful evangelical burden and it changed his life on easy lies the head that wears the crown your season of preparation discovery development and refining and then the season of testing my prayer for you is that you will not give up during your season of test man of god hear me everything god told you he will still do that man of god that woman of god you are you don't look like it the bible says it does not yet appear just stay with god
just stay with God dear CEO it's true that God called you you put your hands in your pocket the only thing you touch is the end of your pocket don't worry it is true you're a kingdom financier it will not come the way you think it will happen you are still in the school of the spirit can I tell you this don't be ashamed of your tears cry but stay whatsoever he tells you to do do it let's hurry up so we can pray When you are done with the season of preparation then you are open to the next season of your life it's called the season of manifestation oh hallelujah when you get to that season when you get to that season called the season of manifestation hebrews chapter 6 and verse 15 Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 15. Please read with me, everyone. One to read. And so, after he had what? He obtained the promise. One more time, everyone, please. And so, continuation to the story. After he had patiently endured. Endured what? The mockery. Endured what? The shame. Endured what? The pain. Endured what? The ridicule. Ask Noah when he was building the ark. There were people who were laughing and saying, This man, only God knows what you had. For 120 years, he was building that ark. But a season would come called a season of manifestation. If you cannot patiently endure, there is no promise. And so, after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. Your season of appearing. Is when God opens the curtain of your destiny and you are ready to stand on the stage of life can I tell you the season of appearing happens so fast it will surprise you there has never been a slow there is there are faces to it there are three faces to your season of appearing but it can happen instantly look at Joseph Joseph is in the prison not knowing that by the next day by that same time he would be the Prime Minister the disciples were tarrying do you know the frustration of tarrying 120 people just waiting i'm sure somebody will say ah what is so special about the holy ghost that he has not come and they say keep quiet don't don't offend the lord just do what he asks you to do listen to what i'm telling you can i tell you this there is a mysterious way god designed the season of appearing it has indicators but you will never know the exact moment you just keep being faithful you don't know that by the next day you are going to get a job by the next day the business proposal that you have written you may never know oh Saul that you are one day left to meet Samuel when Saul left his father's house at a point they were tired they said let's go back he said no we can't go back we have come too far the same energy it takes to go back is the same energy it takes to continue let's finish up there is a seer and as soon as they went by the gates they met this mysterious man called Samuel Samuel laughed he said go up I will come and tell you what is in your heart you will get up one morning thinking it will be like any other day and God will position someone you do not know that you have just wrapped up your season of training I can tell you this how do you know your season of training has come to an end God himself defines the moment for you but I tell you this for everyone who ended seasons a man was there to lift his hands if you are Joseph Pharaoh is there if you are Saul Samuel is there for as long as you have not seen your Samuel keep moving for as long as you have not seen Pharaoh Joseph keep interpreting the dreams for free a day will come you will interpret it and it will not be for free again but qualify do it for the wine presser for free. Do it for the baker for free. Let the wine presser forget you for two years. It's still a test. Because one night, Pharaoh will send for you. And on that day, you will not interpret for free again. Why will Joseph interpret a dream for free? Interpret this for free. And even beg the man 
and say please if you get to Pharaoh tell him I am innocent and he forgot but when the moment was come every night Jesus kept teaching them and telling them the promise of the Spirit is coming they waited and waited and waited for 50 days after he ascended but the Bible says now Acts chapter 2 and verse 1 we're praying now when the day of Pentecost was fully come it says they were gathered with one accord verse 2 please read with me the first two words one to read one more time one more time this is how the season of appearance happens and suddenly he got the job and suddenly the mantle of his destiny came upon him and suddenly the woman got pregnant after 30 years and suddenly God opened the door and suddenly the ministry began to blossom listen to me I can tell you this you know you are in your season of appearing because suddenly things just change with speed you look back and say how did this happen when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion the Bible says we were like them that dream when the Lord began to open doors of ministry for me when the Lord began to show me his mercy on that wise it came with such level of speed I could no longer accommodate my schedules what is this new thing that is happening to me it's as if a curtain just opened everywhere Joshua Selman I know how seasons of greatness comes but can I tell you this while you wait cry but wait keep doing what he's asking you to do you sow the seed like a fool and you are sitting down and God can I tell you this nobody has exhausted his season yet the moment you get to that season of appearing then the, the next level starts with the same cycle again preparation and then manifestation then the next cycle of the next realm preparation you don't exhaust it look at our father in the Lord Bishop David Oedeko when he was building the the faith tabernacle oh did he know another one was coming when Baba Deboe was building the old crown of redeem, that one is a miracle already. That is somebody's prayer point in many lifetimes. But after enduring, God now told him, build three kilometers by three kilometers. Next instruction. I remember those days in the ministry, we used to sit on the ground on mats. And then the days of Zaria. And then now he's brought us into the city only God knows how many episodes of this greatness will happen in our lifetime that is why it's dangerous to over celebrate realms they would distract you there is a healthy way to celebrate and prepare because every time you attain a manifestation of a realm the preparation for the next realm should start immediately this is how champions live champions never plateau champions never rest as soon as they pat their back they know that you are beginning another circle listen to what i'm telling you some of you this is the reason why you rose up in ministry you rose up in your finances as soon as you made 1 million 10 million 100 million you just plateaued and said oh, my soul find rest no you look at our fathers in the lord today it's as if they are just starting ministry I returned back from Enugu and I was seeing the posters of our father Baba Kumuyi everywhere I said at this age this man is still traveling and holding crusades as if he's trying to gain visibility please sir, huh? let me give you an advice when people clap for you sustain the courage to tell them is enough because I'm already focusing on the training for the next season Let me wrap up we're going to pray give us mark chapter 4 from verse 26 let me show you the three levels of stepping into your season of appearing mark chapter 4 from verse 26 please look up everybody never forget this spiritual formula we're about to pray and he said 
so is the kingdom of God as if a man should cast seed where into the ground 27 and should sleep <laughs> and rise up night and day and the seed should spring and grow up he knoweth not is it in your Bible there now here is the progression for the earth bringeth forth fruit of herself now when it has to do with bringing forth fruit three levels first the blade then the air after that the full-blown corn in the air when you begin to step into seasons of greatness everything will not happen at once there are levels first the air you will begin to see God honor you there are politicians today for instance who started as local government chairman when they won they celebrated and God told them be careful don't stop here there is still another height and then maybe they went to state house of assembly and so on and so forth and many are still on their way transiting there are business people I remember for some of you here you will sit down and tell yourself ah I just made one million and one million will look like forever for you you are happy coming from your background this is a miracle and God says celebrate but a day will come you will be feeding nations a day will come you will sign a million dollars two million dollars and give nations and they will ask you how did it feel the first day you say I still can't remember it was pastor Nathaniel Bassi dear friend and brother who was sharing about the things that were happening to him that a time came in this nation when he was under his late pastor nobody knew anything about him there are footballers who suffered as if God did not call them every club side pushed them away and they kept enduring and when their season came just one person looked at them and said come and that was it they never returned again we are going to pray let me share with you a story many years ago I went to a place called premier hotel in Ibadan when I went there um, it was night and I didn't even have the money to pay for any place for accommodation and I'm telling you I said God what is this I entered the place looked around you know wonderful place and I was seeing people and I could not pay for the place I could not even pay for any place looking around I was just hanging around I couldn't hang out in, inside so I was outside and then eventually I made up my mind I said I can't stay like this till morning there was a church somewhere I trekked and I found a church that was doing night vigil I joined them to do that vigil so that I don't waste there's no need wasting time I tell you this and then a few years later I would go to preach within that region and right from I think it was from the airport or so I can't remember the whole story now I saw people greeting me protocol people with cars and they were leading me to my place of stay guess where they took me when I saw myself climbing that hill tears filled my eyes and I said oh God only a fool says there is no God when they dropped me there they took me to their highest suit and i was there i usually travel with my people and they were outside they were swimming there was a program in the evening you know but these guys were swimming playing table tennis and i was watching them from that place i said it's not your fault my dear people They were happy and joined themselves by the pool and I was watching I said oh dear but what if be because of what happened at that moment I said you know what this ministry will just fold it that's all do you know how many people are cheering you in the spirit and saying for our sake don't give up we have been waiting for you do you know how many unborn children who are saying doctor you will be the consultant who will deliver me or oh, in case it's cs make sure you keep giving your best 
do you know how many people who are saying businessman it is your scholarship that is going to raise me to have an encounter don't give up there are nameless faces in the spirit joining the angels to say you have come too far you have come too far apostle you don't know how many times i've failed do not worry there is something called failing forward look up if you enter a plane and the plane is moving and you go back to the back seat are you going backward is the plane moving forward even though inside the plane you are moving back overall are you going backward that's what we call failing forward there is failure as an event there is failure as a person i'm speaking here tonight to a man of god who went for a crusade saying god called you and you went there nobody was healed only one person was saved the people said don't ever tell us god called you again and you return back wondering or a prophet who prophesied 10 cases you got zero you didn't everything you saw was wrong and you are wondering lord did you really call me what of a businessman who five businesses you lost money you failed completely i bring you words of comfort in this kingdom there is something called the season of preparation and the season of appearing during your season of preparation you discover god you discover you you discover that rod that you will be using to do mighty things for the kingdom can i tell you this no matter how many times you fall don't throw that rod that is the rod that you will part the red sea with make sure by the time you get to the red sea you don't get there alone get there with your rod your rod can be your voice your rod can be your hands your rod can be your brain your rod can be your character everything that can help you today we thank god for the privilege of this rod he has so trained us to hold it was once the rod of moses but when he handed it over to god it became the rod of god never call the rod of moses again it is called the voice of you but when you hand it over to God, it's now called the voice of God. It will now sing songs that will go around the world. It will now preach messages that will go around the world. Be careful when you laugh at people who are in their seasons of training. You may be laughing at your destiny helper and bury your head in shame forever. There are people who laughed at young people thinking they will never rise there are people who laughed at business people can can i tell you this sometimes god allows people to witness your failure so that they will be the defenders of your greatness they will say no 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 i saw this man of god i knew when he held a crusade that nobody was there i saw this business person i my mother even gave him 20 naira don't be ashamed of your season of tears the scar on your hand today You've heard me say it. What you are ashamed of today will become your symbol of honor tomorrow. Are you ready to pray? Let's stop here tonight. Please rise up on your feet. Please, no moving around. Lend me two or three minutes. We are going to pray. We are going to pray. We are going to pray. You are going to lift up your voice in the next two or three minutes and you are going to cry before the God of heaven. You're going to tell him, Lord, I am in my season of preparation. Grant me grace. Grant me grace. Lift your voice and pray. If someone pray, grant me grace to discover you. Some of you are just starting in destiny. God may not be talking to you about purpose. God may not be talking to you about ministry. He may not be talking to you about your assignment. He will talk to you about himself. He wants you to know him, not your talent. God first lift your voice and pray cry before the Lord your maker in the beginning God over my life so what will start as a ministry starts as an encounter with God what will start as a kingdom financing ministry will still start as God what will start as a kingdom political career still starts as god everything no matter what it is if it is in its beginning it is god pray 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 for your destiny 
कहते प्रांता का प्रापा को थोस को तो ब्रेक ऐसे करने का था the face of development lord grant me the discipline grant me the diligence may i not pamper myself may i not pamper my destiny let pain not be a a, a, a distraction let pain not constitute a limitation grant me the grace to endure like a faithful soldier building building my mind building my gifts building my mind building my value building my mind building my value if someone pray building my mind building my value this is a template that our fathers followed this is a template that our fathers gave us this is a template that scripture gives us we cannot compromise on the pattern pray for the season of tests oh that when god will prove me may i be faithful that when god will prove me may i have the stamina to remain ye who have continued with me ye who have continued with destiny I will finish my season of training with honor, with nobility, with honor, with nobility, with honor, with nobility, with honor, with nobility, with honor, with nobility. Hallelujah. Hear me. Now you are going to pray for sensitivity so that you will not be missing on the day the grace for appearance comes may it find you where god asks you to stay listen the devil can cheat you through offense the devil can cheat you through impatience the devil can cheat you through the manipulation of demonic spirits to not be where the grace for your season of appearance will find you i like you to pray and cry for grace sensitivity oh god to be where my lifting will meet me. Is someone praying? Go ahead. Please pray. This is a spiritual strategy for greatness. This is a spiritual strategy in this kingdom there is no magic about how we rise this is the protocol non-emotional non-negotiable non-emotional non-negotiable i obtain grace to be sensitive to the man that god will send when my season of appearing comes i will be sensitive to the instructions that come hallelujah hallelujah listen to me some of you before that season comes prepare your cv and keep it waiting so that if they ask for it in two minutes you can send war betides a man when your helpers call you say i'm not yet prepared that was a mistake of the five foolish virgins they were all virgins but what made some wise and foolish was some carried extra oil it was time the longevity of the time was what separated them just because you are among the virgins does not mean you will see the groomsman five carried extra oil they said paradventure we are stretched beyond time we will stay from this oil and the others did not and even though the bible still respects the fact that they were virgins it said they were foolish virgins so while you are praying sometimes the prayer you are praying is not for ministry again it's for the days when you will need to stand alone there are extra things god is giving you don't throw them away don't throw the extra oil there are them that sell if you don't see them on time the bible says when they went to buy 
there was a lamentation behold the bridegroom the season of appearing is come and they, they say everybody got up they lit their lamp and for others the oil was not there and they said sorry even though you have waited this long you have still missed the season go to them that sell and buy that means you can buy on time because in any case you will still buy be sure that you don't buy too late buy when you are young buy before children come buy before responsibilities come buy before preaching engagements occupy you buy oil buy lamb buy before your fame goes away build character build grace build stamina that's buying the oil can i tell you this i look at my life today and with every sense of respect sometimes i look at it and i say this this public life sometimes can be so distracting i will pass and see something that i like on the street i can't stop to buy it because both the person selling it and everybody there it will become something else once upon a time i had my liberty to live my life a day will come you will not have the time to do what you're doing i'm telling you look how long we stay here there was a time we had all the liberty so when god is stretching you see yourself as going to them that sell some of you god is bringing you here it may not be convenient you come from very far and god says still come because a day will come you may not even be in this country again a day will come you may not even be in abuja again but elijah you eat small eat again the journey is still far please go back and listen to this message again go to koinonia global you will find it on youtube listen again and again and again take note of all these teachings that god has been bringing call somebody who you know is going through a season he does not understand tell him i have a message for you there is a spiritual strategy for greatness let this message explain to you the happenings in your life but as for me i made up my mind not to over celebrate realms because i know compared to where god is taking me and compared to where god is taking this ministry thank god for it but we are only starting i tell you this is not what i saw in the visions no you must insist till what god showed you comes to pass when god showed this we saw nations not a city so yours is to believe thank god for what god is doing across the globe but can i tell you as a great family of faith let us give god praise but let's not be too distracted there is a distraction that greatness and success at a level brings we can become full of ourselves koinonia god is doing abc compared to the miraculous we are just playing child's play compared to levels of fire to change territories this is just this is still a school of the spirit stay with god and let him be done with you and you will see that you will send one word and it will shift the spiritual climate of nations i leave you with this word tonight therefore hear me the bible says seeing then that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses it says let us lay aside every weight and the sin that doth easily beset us then it says to run with perseverance the race that is set before us looking up to jesus who is the author and the finisher of your faith modeling from him who for the joy that was set before him he endured the cross and despised the shame father we thank you for the privilege of coming to your house tonight in the name of jesus christ please would you give me one minute being that this um pastor came all the way to fellowship with us from goshen and we truly honor you alongside our fathers baba um Abioye and Bishop Oyedepo these are fathers that I respect these are people who have brought us grace and it will not be a wise thing to just finish like this so please if I would just invite him to come and speak a blessing on behalf of Goshen the grace upon living faith let's honor him as he comes hallelujah Praise the Lord. This is massive work. Let's celebrate Jesus one more time.
I don't know about you. I'm blessed to be around at this point in time. The revival fire we are conducting here will last through your lifetime. Yeah. Every blessing declared today by his servant will stand the test of time in your life. Yeah. I join my faith with his servant, Apostle Joshua Selma. I pray over this house today that your desire is turned into a testimony. Yeah. Standing on the shoe of my father, Bishop David Olani Oedipo, Bishop David Abiyoye, I prophesy to your life, whatever is not working by the encounter of tonight, you will begin to walk. Yeah. I stand on the existing grace on this altar. What you left as concern at tomb before you came here, at your return, it shall turn for you for a testimony. Yeah. That woman that is looking for the foot of the womb, your baby is on this altar tonight. Yeah. That application that you are long overdue for, for a miracle job, your appointment letter is on its way coming to you. Yeah. Every forces that make it work in the hand of our fathers in the faith, that same forces return home with you tonight. All your desire, your expectation. He says, Surely there is an hand, and thy expectation shall not be cut off. I prophesy to your life, your expectation shall not be cut off. Yeah. In Luke 21 13, as I drop the mic, he says, It shall turn for you for a testimony. Yeah. I don't know what is it, but I have good news for you. It shall turn for you for a testimony. Yeah. Be blessed in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Let's celebrate him. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, please let me encourage you. We, I believe in the force of in-gathering, just like we have learned from our fathers. And even though God has honored us, please hear me. I am very passionate about souls. And this is God's mandate for us. Can I encourage you? Don't say koinonia has crowds. This is not about crowd. Make sure that every time you come to church, please drag somebody and bring him to the house of the Lord. Many of you, when you hear these messages, you think about your family members and you think about your people. This is more than just trying to help a man of God to have this. This is not the idea at all. I must lend my voice and challenge you be a soul winner if souls are not saved lives will not be changed a territory will not be transformed so commit yourself to the ministry of in gathering commit yourself to helping and letting people know and see jesus are we together now let them know god is changing lives and that you desire for them to be changed grant them access to the teachings it's a gift that you can give them there is a reason why it is free it has always been free so that the limitations of resources will be broken and you would have no excuse for your edification and make sure that you continue to grow and this word will keep building you in the name of jesus very quickly I want to make an altar call please let's minimize movement you have received the blessing you have heard the word some of you you are in your season of preparation and you are even yet to start or perhaps you've started doing other things minus god please keep standing i know you've been standing let's stand we're almost wrapping up there are people here you came to church and you're saying apostle haven't heard you i know that i need jesus others you've given your life to jesus but you need to rededicate your life to jesus whether you are here in the overflow following from your home i am going to count one to five and give you an opportunity especially that you are within here please don't be ashamed don't wait for anyone to come before you i like you to boldly make that decision come to jesus he's giving you a new beginning are you ready one let's celebrate them as they come don't sit back if you are coming from the overflows please clear the way for them clear the way for them young and old all together god bless our daddy our father is coming god bless you is this how you celebrate salvation the wages of sin is death the bible says 
but the gift of god is eternal life through jesus christ his son keep coming win that war tonight you're saying apostle i'm tired of my life it's time for me to rise no one in my family has risen i know that i need jesus please come quickly i'm counting one to five and we'll be ready to pray if they are coming from outside around the pavement there or the balcony please come quickly join them very quickly two young and old come to jesus three keep coming jesus is calling you in the beginning god in the beginning god you can make that beginning start tonight or you can recycle seasons of defeat or failure in the beginning god four and finally five praise the name of the lord thank you thank you now all who are here and in the overflows just standing by your screen and those who are following from your homes your offices following from whatever tv station i want you to just um while they are lifting their hands you would lift or stretch your hands also as an act of faith i salute every one of you for coming it is honorable to come to jesus god bless you as you're still coming please join them very quickly please lift your right hand high above your head and say this after me mean it from the depth of your heart it's not a poem it's a declaration of faith that has spiritual implications say lord jesus tonight i have heard your word i believe that you are the son of god i believe that you died for me i believe that you rose again for my justification i declare from tonight and forever jesus is my savior my lord and my king i receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness and i declare that i reign in life i am a child of god i go forward ever and backward never in jesus name please keep your hands lifted father we thank you for these ones you have brought them to yourself may the grace that keeps may that grace keep them in the name of jesus by the authority of scripture i declare your sins forgiven i declare that the lord grants you a new beginning the power of sin satan hell and the grave are broken over your life i commend you to the ministry of the word and the ministry of the holy spirit by this i pray that you'll be established in the faith and even in righteousness in jesus name i pray amen and amen god bless you very carefully i want you to follow the counselors they are waving the placard please take note of the crane so that you don't enjoy yourself let's celebrate them as they go you will meet the counselors very briefly they'll have a word with you and you'll be back are you celebrating them hallelujah praise the lord all right very quickly thank you for your patience just um just one announcement tonight we're announcing that the public relations department is a department responsible for our correspondences with all other ministries and platforms world over um, the public relations department of koinonia abuja is now open for new members all interested persons you want to be part of our pr department please i'd like you to apply you're requested here to apply a formal letter addressed to the head of department protocol and logistics and submit it directly to them or you can submit it to pr koinonia as one word pr koinonia at gmail.com on or before wednesday september the 22nd so you have limited time to do this on or before wednesday september 22nd the lord bless you as you engage fruitfully in the service of the kingdom in jesus name have you been blessed tonight thank you again Thank you for your sacrifices. Thank you for all that you continue to do. The Lord will bless you and the Lord will honor you in Jesus' name. Let's rise up for the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Let it rest and abide with us now. Oh, by the way, next week is our miracle service for the month of September. Next week is our miracle service for the month of September. Here in abuja our miracle services are times specially dedicated to just minister the life and the power of god even to the sick 
and all kinds of oppressions please make sure you come with your prayer request it's our culture we come with the prayer request and we pray under a corporate anointing here invite as many and let them come let them know that jesus is lifting jesus is healing the lord bless you in jesus name let's share the grace the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god the sweet fellowship of the holy spirit rest and abide with us now and forever amen surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives as we dwell in the house of the lord forever and ever god bless you see you on sunday at the miracle service is changing it's no more decline I'm on my way to better days declare it now stir no more decline no more decline oh, oh, oh. I'm on my way to better days yes and my status is no more decline. I'm on my way. One more time, send my status is changing. No more decline. I'm on my way. One more time, say my status is changing. No more. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins, incline thy ears to my words, let them not depart from thy eyes, and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well, that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us. Thank you.